My, oh my, it is an early morning, a Monday morning on the Bullring here on Speed 51. I'm Bob Dillner. Alongside of me is Casey LaJoy. Happy to be with you. Happy to be talking about short track racing. Was out last week. Uh, you boys, you and Zach up here. We were holding it down. I, I By watching, I, I think I needed to give you a, like a shot of adrenaline or a shot of caffeine. Because yeah. You sounded tired last week. I was. Week. I was very tired. I had coming off Orange County and that melee. And then, um, yeah, you're just like a spark plug in the morning. <laughs> and I'm not a spark plug. So your electric energy wakes me up. So, and I didn't have that. So d- did your dad have to... You know, coming to your room as a kid. My dad used to come in my room. We would go out and do roofing and gutter work, and he would come in with a cowbell at six a.m. and just ring it, ding, da, ding, da, <laughs> ding, da, ding, to get my butt out of bed. No, uh, my mom would release our dog on us, on me, <laughs> and he would just come in there and jump on me and lick my face, and that was my that was my morning alarm clock. Nice. Well, good yeah. to be back with you here this week on the morning bull ring. Mark Killer with us as well, and Mark. What the heck? All the rain this weekend. You didn't go anywhere. I've been a curse this entire year. I've had more races rained out, I think, in the first, what, every three months into the season than I have in all my previous six years with 51 combined, I think. This has been incredible. Yeah, the All-American 400 at the Fairground Speedway Nashville rained out. Yep. Uh, Oxford, well, called. Snowed out. (laughs) Snowed out, (laughs) yeah. Um, you know, so many more racing uh, ultimate uh, was rained out this past weekend and, and called for bad weather. You know, fortunately, we did get the Arca Menard Series race in yesterday in Salem, Indiana. I don't know how, uh, but uh, just an incredible weather weekend all over the country. So many events rained out. So what are we doing? We're going to be talking about short track racing. We're going to be talking about the races that did get in. And we're going to be talking about the upcoming short track draft presented by PFC Brakes on Speed 51. I don't even know how many years that's been. We'll talk to Brandon Paul on the PFC Performance Hotline in just a minute. But tell you what, before we get kick-started, let's get you caught up with what's going on in the world of short track racing with our own Southeast editor and national correspondent. Doesn't that sound professional? Zach Evans. <laughs> it, it sounds very professional. It, it makes me sound really important. <laughs> yeah. um, you are important, despite the fact that the Hurricanes are down in the NHL playoffs right now. I, I, I just keep telling myself, you know, there's that saying that the series doesn't start until a team wins <laughs> on the road. That might happen tonight. Hey, but. L- listen. Alec Jorgensen's bolts Ooh. are on the verge of a sweep, baby. That's that's no good. That's no good. <laughs> also, Casey, I'm sorry. I have to say it. You, you're talking about how tired you were after Orange County. You didn't go to three races uh, that I weekend. Know. I went to two. You, you, you had me beat by a race. Yeah. Yeah. And, and about two states. But that's another <laughs> story. But enough about us. Let's talk about the news, shall we? Um, Bob, you were there for the Arkham Nard Series race at Salem Speedway. Michael Self picking up the win. Took the lead. 27 laps into the race from Carson Hosevar, who started on the pole, uh, effectively led the rest of the way. There was that weird little sequence under caution with the pit stops, but he ended up restarting in the lead and took the win when the rains came just past halfway. It was also interesting from that race that uh, Christian Eckes entered the race with the points lead. Didn't leave with it, unfortunately. was under the weather Sunday. You might know more about that, Bob, but Harrison Burton subbed for him, and now Travis Braden leading the points. Yeah, it was interesting, actually, because, you know, uh, I spoke to Christian while at the racetrack on Saturday. Uh, We went both our separate ways, and all of a sudden, about four hours before the race, uh, I get somebody telling me that Christian's not here. And I said, what's going on? And and apparently what happened was, and I, I spoke to his dad, I've texted back and forth with Christian, and Christian, if you're watching this morning or if anybody that likes Christian, you know, knows Christian, is around Christian, whatever it may be, uh, tell him a speedy recovery from, uh, from everybody at Speed 51. I texted with him a little bit last night, but his dad was telling me that basically, you know, right after dinner on Saturday, he got ill. Um, and he saw Michael Self down in the lobby of the hotel, and, and Michael's like, what's the matter? He's like, I, I don't feel good, dude. You know, and uh, not to get, you know, too much detail, uh, but, you know, he, he threw up, okay, and, and, and just kept on not feeling good. So they brought him to the hospital, 
And, uh, you know, he became, you know, so ill that it affected some other things. And because of that, with those flu-like conditions, he's still in the hospital. Uh, His dad told me he'll have some tests done today to find out if he's able to go home today or if he's going to have to stay in that uh, hotel, in that uh, hospital uh, nearby Salem Speedway. So an unfortunate circumstance for sure for Christian Eckes who led the points for the Arkham Menard series going into that event. Um, you know, I, I could tell that Michael Self, that entire Venturini team, very emotional after that win by Michael Self. And, and it was actually, the rains did come just a couple of laps prior to halfway. And then kudos to the Arkham Menard series for just going a couple laps under caution to make sure <laughs> we got to 101 uh, because uh, the forecast was just awful. I, I did not think that we were going to get that race in yesterday. Yesterday. It was amazing to me. It rained prior to us going on the air. It rained up till 58. We went on the air at 2 o'clock at 158. It was raining, and we still started on time, a rush schedule and all sorts of stuff. But uh, I felt like it was a good broadcast, and it was a decent race. Arkham Menard Series, so much youthful talent coming through the ranks. Always good to see. And, on and- TV. And, and next race, they'll go from, you know, the bull ring of Salem to the big old Talladega Super Speedway. So always interesting to see those cars at, at the restrictor plate tracks. Uh, Southern Nationals, Spring Nationals got in one race this weekend. Unfortunately, Friday, they were rained out at Clay Valley Speedway, the old Lonesome Pine Speedway. Um, but Saturday, they were able to get the race in at Smoky Mountain, 10,000 to win. Dale McDowell picking up the win. Mac Daddy. Mac Daddy picking up the win led every lap but it was not without pressure especially from big sexy brandon overton uh ricky wise finished third kyle strickler fourth in the late model deal and michael chilton rounding out the top five yeah There's strickler's got a new late model ride yeah. this year mm-hmm. high so side tickler that should be interesting because we'll really see you know we know how talented he is behind the wheel of a modified uh, but he's going to put most of his eggs in the late model basket this year. So Kyle Strickler will be fun to watch in the dirt late model circuit. And by the way, that that's two wins uh, in two weeks for Mac Daddy, Dale McDowell, because he won the ultimate race uh, when we were at Bulls Gap the week before. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I think asphalt drivers need nicknames like dirt drivers. Absolutely. I've been saying that ever since yes. Bob started taking me to these dirt track races. Yeah. I mean, even the first one I went to, I can't remember if it was Carolina Clash or Ultimate, but you have, you know, you know the Denver Dirt Slinger, yeah. and, right? Uh, Adam Yarborough. We, we yes. have uh, we have nasty, nasty, or classy, that's nasty. Yeah, depends and on that's which fun. Day. Yeah, you know. Uh, here's the deal. Tell you what. Let us know on our Facebook Live post or on Twitter uh, what you think some of the best nicknames are in racing, dirt or pavement. And and I do think it's pretty lame that that pavement people are way too professional, especially with yeah. the announcers, not to have any nicknames and stuff. I think it's a bunch of hogwash. That's right. Bub yeah. McCool is probably the coolest name, I think. Bub McCool. That is pretty cool. And Will Power. Yeah. But that's his real name. Will Power. That's kind of, that's not a nickname. That's like talking about I nicknames. said his, it's his real name, but it's still a cool name. I, uh, I don't like Will Power. Uh, I mean, I like him, but I don't like him. <laughs> I was going to say, you might want to clarify that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Bob Dillner thinks Will Power is a jerk. Confirmed. You heard it here first <laughs> yeah, on right. the morning bull Hashtag. ring. Uh, so, um, speaking of nicknames, though, Superman. Johnson Cue the Davenport. music. There we go. Now do your report. Superman Jonathan Davenport picking up the win at Hagerstown Speedway with the Lucas Oil Late Mall Dirt Series. Interesting to note, in 11 previous races with that series at Hagerstown, 11 different winners. Davenport, the first repeat Lucas Oil winner at Hagerstown. And usually he kind of sucks at Hagerstown, to tell you the truth, even though he has won there. Well, you're going full transparency uh, this morning, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, honestly. <laughs> I, I was like, damn, J.D. won at Hagerstown. I was expecting, like, honestly, uh, you know, Greg Satterley or, or somebody like that to, to win because he's won at Hagerstown before. He's good in that area. So I was expecting if I had to put my money on somebody, it was going to be the truth because nobody can handle the truth. Greg Satterley is usually oh. pretty good, but Superman got him this time. We, we got a, a comment from Marty. Yeah. And it says, Marty who? 
Marty Henson says <laughs> Ross DeBoss Bales. I thought it was Hales Bales. I, well, you came up with Hales Bales. No, I no, didn't. I, was Tyler, Wesley. I thought Tyler Williams did. Oh, I heard Wesley Hillsuit. Outland do it the first time. Was Who his knows? first one I heard huh. say it. But interesting. Yeah, I, I like I like Hales Bales. I like Hales Bales too. Yeah, yeah. But, but people have to be old school and love like you know ACDC. Half the yeah. people nowadays don't even know who ACDC yeah, exactly. is. Exactly. So. Do you know who ACDC I is? Absolutely. Okay. Know who he's, he's, I, I'm not. He's that 27. Young. Yeah. You're 27. 29. Right? 29. 29. Hey, he's, he's, he's older old. than we thought he was. He's yeah. old. Yeah. <laughs> my my face doesn't look 29. No. But yeah. Absolutely. Enjoy I Tom just that. Whack the microphone, Hi, Tom. By the way. Tom. How you doing, Tom? Just. Yep. There you go. <laughs> thumbs up. Keep up the good work. <laughs> yeah. Keep up the good work. What else do you have to say? What else do I have to say? You want to talk about the uh, Super Dirt Car Series? Hey, if How's you want to. Super Mad Shepard. Yes, he did. We picked up the win at Can-Am Speedway, the inaugural. Well, let me get the name right. Thunder you, you, you in the Thousand the Islands again. 100. No, that's reserved for okay. JD. Uh, okay. There's okay. Super Matt Shepard and then Superman. So <laughs> we have to come up with a Super Matt song, I guess. Well, that was that series. Oh, it'd be like Funky Cold Medina. Boo. <laughs> so that was Super Dirt Car Series returning to Can-Am Speedway for the first time in a decade. And importantly for Mr. Shepard, that win gives him a guaranteed starting spot in the Billy Whitaker Cars 200 at Super Dirt Week. He don't need it. No, no. but <laughs> it, he has it. It's kind of like when Bubba Pollard won at South Boston last year in the past series to get locked into the Oxford 250. It's, it's, it's nice, I guess. He almost needed it. He, yes, he did. <laughs> he stunk for a while up there at Oxford and came back to win the show. So that's pretty pretty impressive by old Bubba. Well, he was also running a pro late model. Yeah? At a super late model race. Well. So that might knock down your qualifying a little bit. Hey, listen. Well, not really, because most people run the, the crate engine up there because of the track. Well, we're going to get into this horsepower debacle. L- listen, listen, <laughs> listen, Casey. When you go to a racetrack, most of the time these teams detune the engine you know, a different carburetor, carburetor spacer, something like that. They they, they, they take away power. This so. is way too technical for a Monday anyway, morning. Yeah. Um, By the way, drink Bubba, your damn coffee. Bubba picked up a win at the, on the dirt this weekend. He did. Too. Sonoa. That's cool. Yep. Yep. Sonoy. Sonoa. Sonoy. I thought it was. Son- I thought you'd do like a Oya. Sonoya. No, the A. Well, from what I've heard, the A is silent, so it's just Sonoy. But. No matter who you ask, it's you get it's a different. It's Georgia. Different like, <laughs> I've heard more Georgia different ways. Do they know how to pronounce things down there no. in Georgia? No. <laughs> I, I've like... heard more different ways to pronounce Sonoya that I've seen people spell my name. Right. Which is, you know, you could have the C K, the C H, just the C, the A R Y, the E R Y. Exactly. You know. Yes. Get with the news. Get with the news. <laughs> wow. How about we close since we well we close with Bubba winning on the dirt, but we'll we'll close with the pavement. Peyton Sellers. Winning at Larry King Law's Langley Speedway in the inaugural Grassroots 200. We'll be talking to him later today here on the Morning Bull Ring about that win. Do we have to say the name before Langley Speedway? Holy cow. It, it's a mouthful. I think that's yeah. it's Larry, a mouthful. What is it? I think Larry, it's, it's Larry King's Law. What? It's just Larry, like, King, Larry King Law is a law firm up there that yep. has gotten the naming rights for the Speedway. Oh, is that so what it is? Larry so it's King a sponsorship. Laws. Yes. Okay. Larry King Laws Langley Speedway. It's like uh, Stafford. Stafford used to go, uh, wasn't it, Jack, Jack Roots, Stafford Motor Speedway? Yeah. So kind of the same deal. I, I don't like it. Yeah. It's oh, too well. long. Yeah. I don't like long. By days. the way. Yep. Uh, thank you very much, Zach, for the news. Great job, by the way. Uh, I, I'm wearing red today for the Red Sox, but also for Tiger Woods. Tiger, baby. What a comeback. That what a sports awesome. day. Uh, just unbelievable. And if you really think about it, and I think that racing can learn from what we saw yesterday out of Tiger Woods winning the Masters because nobody would expect golf to be maybe the biggest comeback story of all time, yep. certainly the biggest sports story of the year. So if golf, which I love, can have that great of an impact. And I was I was keeping track of it while at Salem Speedway for the Arkham Menard Series event and doing my job with Mav TV yesterday. I was following it. Okay, if golf can do that for America, so can short track racing. Well, you know what? You know why yesterday was better than the Saturday night Richmond race? Because why? the guy in second could pass the guy in the lead, and he wasn't caught up in dirty. Uh oh, uh oh! You're starting some turmoil. I had to de- defend my Listen, boy Dylan Smith yesterday. Mamba, I was getting pissed off. Oh, Mamba, 
He's got a way of just, like I, I love he didn't his see passion. Wrong. I know, but I don't like dirty air at short tracks. Even though Richmond's not a short track, I don't want to be talking about dirty air ever. I okay? agree. And this package is dirty air. Like I, I don't want to talk about it. It's dirty. It's it's, it's awful. Dirty. We need it, soapbox music. Close dirty. racing isn't always good racing. Yeah, but but here's the deal. So many people on Twitter, all oh, they like to do is quiet. whine and complain right. and just. Shut up. Say yeah. something positive. Like I, I didn't like it, so I didn't say anything. Yeah. So we're I, getting pissed off. So we right. need to bring in Brandon Paul. That's we? right. Yeah. Let's go to the PFC Performance Hotline. Brandon Paul, what did you think about Richmond? Uh, I didn't watch Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> I um, bet you I know why. But <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it was it was awesome watching Tiger. I think it's more like just storylines um there was a storyline there that you could follow with with the different personalities and, and whatnot at the masters and and that's what we're lacking sometimes in short track racing especially pavement um short track racing uh and i think the whole nicknames thing is a great is a great um place to start i mean it sounds like something so simple uh but it's not when you go to a dirt race uh when i went to aldora last year you have black sunshine scott bloomquist superman jonathan davenport the newport nightmare which is one of my favorites jimmy owens you don't have that um in asphalt racing uh, i mean we had a little time last year when, when people were calling bubba pollard redneck jesus that's kind of gone away um so it's it's just you're lacking that in in asphalt racing well, the redneck Jesus thing's still there, even though it's supposed to be short track Jesus. It kind of got turned because didn't Noah call him short track Jesus at the Derby? He did, you know. And honestly, redneck Jesus came about years ago, but it it wasn't really pronounced because it it's kind of you know not a great term. It's right. just it, it's supposed to be a fun term. Right. It was supposed to be for Dale Earnhardt Jr. That's back what in the I day. always thought. I, I believe it was Johnny Roberts actually that coined that phrase uh, a long time ago. When we were just joking around, and Johnny does a lot of great, you know, impressions and just calls people by nicknames and stuff, and, and he came up with all red, redneck Jesus, you know, Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's really where it became. But I, I do love nicknames. I mean, you know, if you look at, you know, some of the cars that are on our desk right here, you got the Rapid Roman Richie Evans. Uh, Kendra doesn't have a nickname. She's got to win a race Ken, before she has Ken a nickname. A. Sorry, Ken A. Um, That's her nickname. Superman, right. Jonathan Davenport, and Charging Charlie Jerzombek. So, um, you know, if you think about it, all the good ones right. have nicknames. All of them. The Intimidator. Yeah. I mean, your iconic guys have nicknames. Yeah. I mean, I just I just get so frustrated with pavement racing. They want to see it be all prim and proper. I want nicknames. <laughs> I gave Andy Sice a nickname, the Granite State Rocker. <laughs> <laughs> and it stuck with you know, me yeah, with you that's, that's the thing like the nascar wheel and modified tour that would be the perfect place i mean you see it with, with the guys you just mentioned um and even more but like current day you have you have like timmy salamito they call him the natural um but like Doug Colby, Justin Bonsignor, like we need to get those guys nicknames, or maybe we should just have them give each other nicknames or, oh, or something. That might be dangerous. You gotta do something yeah. there. That's a perfect situation for those guys, just uh true grassroots racers. Um and this isn't a slight to them or anything, but but I, I don't believe any of those those guys are probably uh going anywhere at this point. They've kind of settled into that role and they and they really love what they do in the modifies and that's just a, a grassroots series that I think you could really take advantage of something like that um, and almost turn it into that atmosphere you get when you go to like a dirt late model race with the Lucas Oil late model dirt series or the World of Outlaws or, or one of those things. I think that's that would be a great opportunity uh, for asphalt short track racing right there with the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Well, let me tell you a little story about a nickname. Brian Shirley, who is last year's Dirt Car uh, UMP Late Model Summer Nationals champion, and he has won the Knoxville Nationals. He's won a lot of big races, especially around the Midwest area of the United States. Dirt Late Model guy. His nickname is The Squirrel. And for years, James Essex, Dave Argwright, myself, with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series on MAV-TV, would call him The Squirrel. Well, two years ago, we went to uh, the Chili Bowl in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Dave Argabright and I were standing with Brian Shirley, and we're just, you know, shooting the bowl. And I said, dude, I got to ask you, why do they call you the squirrel? 
And, and he explained it. And, and he said it came from my motocross days. And he was very successful early in his career at motocross. And he was just jumping the jumps and so forth. And, and I, it was a prominent motocross racer that coined him. And I can't remember that for the life of me. But he said, man, Shirley, you look like you're jumping like a squirrel out there. And, and then people just started calling him the squirrel. Now, the squirrel in racing, and Mark, you know this, sometimes if you call somebody a squirrel, it's not a yeah. good thing. No, no, okay. no, it's not good. But Shirley said, I don't really like the name, but I'm going to use it because it sells T-shirts. It gets people excited. And I think that is a perfect example of how people are always, well, I don't like the drivers. Are like, I don't like that nickname. I'm, I'm not going to do that. You know, I, I, I want something better. Dude, it's not up to you to give yourself a nickname, okay? Dude, I, I tell you what, Millbridge, we have, like, the greatest nicknames. I, I didn't even come up with them. They're, the, they're self-proclaimed nicknames, and they're all awesome. <laughs> hey, that's fine. You got Kinzer Flynn's the Mohawk Maniac. I uh -huh. think we got CJ Sweat is the Assassin. And then we have the Bone Crusher, Colt Curry. We have so many cool nicknames. We got Captain America. I mean, we got tons of stuff. Sells T-shirts. It does. So, so, you know, what would Brandon's nickname be? Uh, I call him Popcorn. Popcorn. Popcorn boy. <laughs> That's how he says popcorn. <laughs> how about that? All right. You know, so tell us tell us on uh, social media uh, what nicknames you have for your drivers that you watch around the country and, and what some of your favorite nicknames are. We want social interaction. Remember, speed51dot.com on Twitter. Uh, also follow our Facebook page. You could be watching on our Facebook page. Make sure you share that this morning to maybe win a prize. It depends on what uh, Mark and Zach and, and Brandon decide because they're the bosses. I'm not. Uh, but no I'll more T-shirts. Uh, no, we're giving away stuff all the time. Share the post. Share the love. We want to grow this show it's free for everybody to to watch or listen to on monday mornings we have a podcast the different segments of the show are featured on a podcast and by the way the 51 unfiltered podcast returned last week uh, with a great interview uh, with david rogers his cancer and remission we love that very excited to hear that uh, but in terms of what else is going on mr bp what is it well, we, I don't know if you know this, but we launched this thing this weekend um, called the New 51. <laughs> Took a uh, while. A brand new, new look, uh, state-of-the-art website on speed51.com. If you're listening to the show this morning, you've probably seen it. Uh, but it is, uh, it's awesome. Uh, a, a new sleek look on our website as we gear up to, to really get going here in the 2019 short track season. Uh, we're trying to make it easier for people to access the content that they want from stories to videos uh, and all of the above. Um, it's just, it's more user friendly. It's more mobile friendly. And uh, I know you're excited about it and uh, everybody at Speed 51 is excited about it. So if you're listening on Facebook um, or watching on Facebook and you haven't seen the new website yet, definitely head over and check it out during the show, after the show. And, uh, throughout the 2019 season. Yeah, it's a hell of a lot of work uh, and a lot of heartache as well. Uh, but everybody on our staff, uh, uh, Ian as well uh, with Turn 2, uh, did a great job at uh, putting this together. We're still fine-tuning it. Uh, there's going to be things that uh, we want to do, and I know there's already like a list of like five or six things that I want uh, to do to what I think could make it better and, and more easy to use for the users and so forth. And we're trying to make it a little bit less cluttered. Listen, we still got to pay bills. So there's they're still advertising on there, and, and that's just the way it's going to be. It's kind of like a race car. It's got to be advertising. It'd look real cool without anything on the side. Uh, but there's the site right there. You know, you see that slider with all the pictures that goes across the screen and uh, the top stories uh, throughout the country on short track racing, which we love all much. That trending uh, side of things there, uh, that will be the top stories over the course of a, a complete week or day, depending on what we set it to. Uh, then we have, we're going a little bit too fast, uh, 51 Network. Of course, we want to talk about the 51 Network um, because that's where you see all the videos for the premium members. Members, $9.99 a month, $79.99 a year. We have already have uh, the stuff up from Anderson, Indiana this past weekend for the CRA Late Model Sportsman. Uh, Vorus Compacts will be coming up as well as the CRA Street Stocks and the highlights and so forth from that. Of course, with the vid official video home of Fast Track and Ultimate, we'll be talking about the big race this weekend at Virginia Motor Speedway a little bit later on on the show. And then, of course, all the categories and so forth. But I, I think even on the top of the site, uh, some several key elements to understand 
And uh, if you go to live races uh, and you click on that, you can see the schedule for 2019 uh, for everything uh, going on in terms of our live races. Click on that schedule for 2019 right there. Uh, you can see all the races that we got going on. And, and it started out earlier in the year, but you can see some of them that are coming up. And actually, I have about, and Mark, close your ears, um, we have about uh, probably about 10 more to honestly add uh, to that uh, coming up here this week. Uh, so as we continue with some of our partnerships and so forth, uh, but there's a lot of stuff to to see on the new site. Um, and we go back to that main page. I want to go to the on-demand page, and this is a cool feature. Don't click anything. Okay, but if you look, there's a drop-down toggle right there. So depending on what you're a big fan of, you get to see your realm of racing. You know, whether it be pavement, you know, pro late models, pavement super late models, dirt modifieds, you know, outlaw carts, you name it. There's a lot of stuff on there. On board footage, I want to go to dirt late models because that's that's really kind of like, you know, my favorite right now. I'll go to dirt late models and you can see a lot of the videos that are there. We have videos up from the Carolina Clash series. Ultimate Series, Fast Track, you name it. Um, you know, Dirt Kings will be on there this year. We focus on a lot of the regional forms of dirt late model racing. But if you go back to the on uh, on the all page, basically, um, you know, and, and you look, we've been doing this for a couple of years now. And I think the cool thing there is, if you look at the videos, more than three thousand videos on the Speed 51 video network for premium subscribers. Um, that's pretty cool. We are putting up videos just about every single day. And the reason why we use the word daily is because if you equate the number of videos that we put up to the amount of days in a week, it's way more than daily because I think uh, last week Tom told me we had like 32, 36 videos, something like that. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, our video team doing a great job at providing content for all the premium subscribers. So if they're are some big races around America, pavement or dirt. It doesn't matter. We are 100% short track racing. Make sure you subs subscribe. A lot of people say, hey, why do you charge for it? We got a big budget. I mean, our budget is about three quarters of a million dollars, honestly. So, and and when you have that big budget, you got to be able to pay for it. And uh, all of our content, in terms of stories and at track blog style coverage, that's free. It's the video side of it, uh, whether it be a live broadcast or some of the on demand features uh, that you have to become a premium subscriber. So, a lot of good stuff there for sure on the. Uh, on the new Speed 51, we're excited about it, and uh, we'll show it to you again a little bit later on on the show. But uh, we're we're beefed up, we're we're pumped up. I think last time that you released a new website or like a new design, 2014, was you released T-shirts with them. Are you getting some T-shirts made this time? Oh well, we didn't do that. You had but the, I still have the new. It's like the new old shirt. I'm not wearing it. Today, but but here's what but we're gonna do. You're wearing the Dylan Smith shirt. That's right. That's uh, free. So yeah, outlaw cart driver from around this area, and it tries to do some modified racing as well. Yeah. So uh, we love Dylan. Uh, love the family. Tammy, if you're watching from the Joy of Seating, uh, we we well. Maybe you shouldn't be, but right. hopefully you don't get in trouble. Hopefully you're watching this morning. Yep. Um, but uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a post today. Okay, Mark, look at him. Show his camera. Come on. Show his camera. You ready, Mark? Gosh, you're taking forever. Now, now he's ready. Okay, you ready? We're going to give away a T-shirt. We're going to have a post today about the new Speed51.com. We want your comments. We want your suggestions. We, we don't want to hear your complaining, okay? Be nice about it if, you, if there's something that you don't like for whatever it is. Because a lot of hard work went into this. And nothing is perfect. Uh, but at the same time, you're going to share this post. And the, the people that share this post, we're going to pick, you know, three people maybe out of the hat. And, and we're going to give away a couple of T-shirts, maybe some stickers, maybe a hat, something like that. And, and we're going to give away some stuff. But you have to be able to share either the Facebook post or the Twitter post because we want people to know more about short track racing. And, of course, the new Speed 51 has a lot to do with that and distributing that information. Sorry, Mark. No comment? No, that's a, I, now that we have Zach here in the office, I'm actually <laughs> kind of stoked about it because he's kind of taken over the uh, – the, the t-shirt shipping duties from me so zach's been doing a great job of getting that stuff out in the uh in the mail he took care of our, our bracket challenge winners last week oh there you go um and Who all won? that so where the heck is I have zach? no why idea is he at his desk 
He, he, That's he, what actually, I want he goes hurts. to his desk and then watches he us to be on out Facebook here so Live. So he can stay so. on microphone and partake uh, in this show with us. There's some people weighing in on Facebook. Okay. Connor Sullivan's one of yeah. them, and he's talking about how Logano passed Boyer. Connor, no, that's irrelevant. Um, and also, people are weighing in on uh, Facebook about nicknames. And um, honestly, the modified guys are doing just fine. You know, you got Jimmy, Showtime, Blue, Showtime. Show, Showtime. You got uh, Kid Rock, Keith Rocco, um, a lot more weighing in as well. And Big Money, of course, Matt Hirschman. I think modified guys are doing fine. I think it's the late model drivers that are struggling. I think, late I think it drivers. should be Dynamite, Doug Kobe. Dynamite, I, Doug Kobe. I, I yeah. think we should let Bonsignor pick Kobe's nickname. <laughs> no. and Kobe gets to pick he'll Bonsignor's say, nickname. He'll say, you know, Doug, the piece of Kobe. It's right. Yeah, it has to be edited. It has to be. Um, it has yeah. to be friendly. But um, you know, I think I, I, you know they're going to chime in on each other, anyways. On on Twitter, I would love to see uh, their suggestions for nicknames for each other. Well, you know, honestly, Justin Mincy uh, on Twitter this morning uh, chimes in with probably one of the best nicknames in all of short track racing: the High Side Tickler, right. Kyle, Strickler. Kyle Strickler. My wife doesn't like that nickname. I don't know why, but um, it, it's a uh, it's a pretty funny nickname. And uh, Patrick coming back, and he says the Tampa Bay Tornado, Robbie Crouch. I, I've never heard no. of that nickname I, for Robbie Crouch, honestly. So, I heard it down around Florida, but really? very, very, I, I didn't hear it a ton. Are we talking about? I, I like the door behind you, the smooth operator. Robbie Crouch, smooth are we operator. talking about New England? I Robbie Crouch? Or? I think so. Okay. So why is he the Tampa Bay Tornado? Does he, he may have been born there? down there. Maybe he was born you down never, there. Like okay. Will Cagle. Will Cagle's from Florida, but he made his name up in the, you know, all over the Northeast with Modified. So. Yeah, that is true. That um, is true. My I, favorite is still Hot Shoe. The original hot shoe, Gary Ballou. Oh, okay. That's that's the nickname that I I always go back to. Oh, there was a lot of Flying Dutchman, Fred Harback back in yep. my day. You know the uh, Reg. Yeah, Jumpin' Jack Johnson. You know from the Dirt <laughs> Modified realm. If you think about it, Bubba, that's his nickname. That's not his name. Yeah, Andrew. So, yeah. Yeah, Steve out in uh, <laughs> Kern County Raceway Park calls. That's him one Andrew. of my favorite things when we <laughs> when we were going out there when Bubba was racing the winter showdown and he insisted on calling him Andrew Pollard and half the time nobody knew who he was talking about. But technically that's a nickname is Bubba. Yeah, it is. You know, and a lot of people say that's why Bubba never got a chance. Uh, you put him in a darn no, truck, right. you'll see somebody kick some so, ass. So so nobody named Bubba can make it in the I guess not. Um right. Uh, you got Connor <laughs> Sullivan saying Magic Shoes. Sorry, I'm reading comments. Magic, Tony Magic Shoes, shoes yeah. Mike Magic. McLaughlin. Right. Tony says Derek Griffith needs a nickname. D. Griff. Yeah. But that's well, not... listen, it's kind of like Brandon Shepard. We call him B. Shep. Yeah. So he doesn't count. You just condense their name. D. Griff. Somebody else said, and this isn't really a nickname. It's more of a phrase. Brian, Brian Kramer said, Stuart, he's so cold, he's freezing. <laughs> He's got one of the best nicknames, and he's a spot. I want a spotter T-shirt. I want a hot pockets or pockets. Yeah. It's really, but he can put hot pockets, you know, because he he thinks he's hot. So I, I would like to well, see. Well, you got to call him hot pockets. There's already another pockets that works in the business. There's already another pockets. Wait a second. We might be talking about the same one. No, there's, about... there's hot pockets, and that's 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 Brian, Brian. The spotter, and then there's yeah. pockets. That's, that's he worked with uh, Harrison Burton for a while. Okay, well, I don't know why I just slammed. Listen, that. there's only oh. one pockets. Well, there's two pockets. No, there's there's only one. There's <laughs> really only one. Is this really what <laughs> you we're ask him? And he'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I I want you to have your own T-shirt. Let let's let's create that, Brian. Uh, pockets needs a T-shirt for sure. Spotter for Joe Graff Jr. And um, yesterday, what the hell happened yesterday, dude? You guys suck there at Salem. What the what what happened? That's what I want to know. I thought you were talking to Zach. I kind of caught the back end yeah. of that, and I was like, <laughs> "Zach should be on the microphone. He should partake he's, in the darn show instead of being on the." Computer. He's actually working. We're yeah. we're just back here talking about nicknames. Well, you know, we have something else to talk about too. The short track draft uh, presented by PFC Breaks coming up. Uh, the top pick, I believe, it's April twenty fifth, will be revealed. Believe it or not, that's just like less than two weeks away. We don't even have the ballots out. We're behind the times. Zach Evans, Brandon Paul, Elgin Statboy trailer working hard on the ballot. Um, right now, we're closing in on 300 names, and I'm sure we'll go over that. Um, I got a bunch of people in my phone to actually tell them uh, because some of them are from the dirt realm that we need to talk about for sure. Uh, do you have that kid out from... Uh, uh, California that we had on the show that was really well spoken was it Dylan Zampa? Is that the name? I think he's testing at Hickory tomorrow. Actually, 
I want to show Casey's I face know, when you just asked I, him. Well, I want almost your face sure. is about the same, Mark. I, what? I'm almost sure he is. I need to double okay. check that one because I know I'll there look. is a Zampa, but there's brothers. So. Okay. Okay. I'm looking. Let's see. I see Dylan Fetcho. There's, Fetcho. And there's I Logan. I see Dylan West. Yeah, Zampa's on there. Okay. Yep. Zampa, 14 years old. Yep. Pro late model winner at Madeira. So he's going to be one that I'm going to have on my top 51. Just saying, right there. He's there. He's yes. in. And you know why? Why? Be- because of his prowess here, and I love the word prowess, you know, in the interview with us on the morning bull ring, he was impressive. He was, I, that might have been a day I wasn't here. No, was he the one that uh, thanked his sponsors? He thanked was his that, sponsors. Was that the yes. one? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Can, excuse me, sir, can I have time to thank yep. my sponsors? That was hilarious. <laughs> that was awesome. But uh, BP, the draft coming up, uh, explain to people what the draft is all about. Uh, basically the draft is, is just like, I mean, the NFL draft where we, the only difference between this, the short track draft and the NFL draft is that drivers do have the opportunity to, to enter the draft more than once. But basically what we do is we send out a bunch of ballots with all these names, 300, 250, 300 drivers, whatever we narrow it down to. And they rank them based on, uh, their their talents, um, both on and off the racetrack, um, and, and there's a lot of things that have to go that goes into it um, as far as the success on the track, um, how they speak, their appearance, their ability with marketing, um, with with sponsors, all that stuff has to be considered. Um, and from there, basically, we tally up the votes and and put together a list of the top 51 uh, short track racing prospects uh, in North America. And we released that list. And and if you look back on previous years, you can really see uh, just how good of an indicator that this is every year. I mean, last year, Harrison Burton was the number one pick. Now racing trucks in in some Xfinity stuff. Uh, Todd Gillen and Christopher Bell. uh, The list goes on and on, uh, going back to Daniel Hemrick and and even further than that but um but yeah there's a there's a lot of uh a lot of talented drivers on the list uh you mentioned we really started putting together the list this past week and and when you do that you kind of get a reminder of of just how many prospects there are out there that are that are really looking to get that next shot so i'm always interested to see as the votes get tallied um what other people think uh, because as you've mentioned previously, a lot of people share their input with us on this deal, uh, from NASCAR Cup Series drivers to uh, industry experts, media, uh, team owners, just all, all these different people who have a different perspective on on these short track racing prospects. They share their thoughts, and it's, it's always interesting to see how it all shakes out. It is going to be interesting to see how everything shakes out, and uh, that all begins April 25th on Speed 51. The ballots will be going out, I believe, on Wednesday of this week. we got to go through things with a fine-tooth comb to make sure that we have everything set, and we're going to have some draft discussion on this show right now. Brandon, you going to come back for that? Oh, yeah, I'm ready for it. All right, 25 years old and younger. We want to talk about clear the air with a few things. Is Ty Majeski available? Who's going to be the favorite for the number one pick? Uh, that's all coming up on the morning bull ring a little bit later on. We're going to take a quick break here on Speed 51. Coming up, we have some good guests. We're going to be talking about a great weekend of racing coming up here in the southeast. The Easter Bunny 150 at Hickory Motor Speedway. That will be a lot of fun with the Pro All-Star Series. That will be a pay-per-view broadcast. You can buy it now on Speed 51. Then, of course, up the road in Virginia, the king of the Commonwealth for the ultimate super late models and fast track, plus a whole lot more. we got a lot of guests coming up. In fact, our first guest in terms of a driver coming up next here on the Morning Bullring, and he's a late model stock car dude. U.S. Nationals return to Bristol Motor Speedway. May 31st and June 1st. For tickets, visit BristolMotorSpeedway.com. 
forward slash tickets. Speed 51's video network, where the battles are legendary. Get the full picture on short track racing. We'll take you behind the scenes. Um, he's just a meathead. He's always the same way. Your track, your driver, your sport, your passion. Dirt, late models, modifieds, and more. Race highlights, recaps, interviews, and thousands of on-demand videos. Speed 51 Network, short track racers home for the best video coverage. Hey race fans, download the new speed51.com app today. Breaking news, feature stories, the unfiltered podcast, live race coverage, schedules, and more right at your fingertips. Download it today on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Seven forty-two in the morning here on the morning bullring speed fifty-one. Check out the new speed fifty-one. A brand new website debuted on Saturday. So if you're waking up and you go to speed fifty-one and it looks a little different, well, hopefully that's a good thing for you because a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears went into that website, baby. I'm Bob Dillner, Casey LaJoy alongside of me, and we are talking short track racing. Doesn't get that much much better than that, unless you're Tiger Woods, who's probably hung over right now. Yes, probably. <laughs> um, yeah, I, d- I didn't get to really see a whole lot of racing. I got rained out everywhere I was supposed to go. Yeah, you did. I was supposed to go to Nashville, rained out. I was supposed to go to Fayetteville, rained out. So uh, I played. I went to Top Golf yesterday. Oh, for you did, brother in law's. So you were birthday. trying. To, you were trying to be Tiger Woods. Wasn't working. Wasn't working. I got. I made some points. I can hit a decent golf ball, but I'm not no Tiger Woods. So when we have the Speed Fifty One tournament this year. Are you going to partake in that? And you think is you're that be the a new runner? is that the new thing now? Top golf instead of the GoPro Motorplex? No, we're not doing Top Golf. Oh no, because Top Golf. I'm sorry, I know Mark wants to go, but Top Golf is is fine if you yeah. like that sort of thing. But getting out on a real golf course and making fools of ourselves yeah. that's much better. I want to do the iFly thing. I got to do that too. You, dude, listen. I I know you, you're, friends you're that have cr- birthdays. You can't buy you can't buy a car and you're going to the iFly. I know. I, I know friends is. that have birthdays. Okay, that's what you, <laughs> that's what you need. You gotta have friends that have birthdays. Dude, you can tell you're like spoiled. You know this area is spoiled because you know my birthday parties. I don't do that sort of thing. Well, okay, like your birthday parties with the crowd that you hang out with. It's not my birthday. Uh, right, right. But the crowd you hang out with, they well, got a lot of money. No, they go to stuff like no. that. What the heck's that? I got friends that are bougie. What do you want me to? <laughs> What do you want me to say? Bougie. Oh, That's bougie. the word of the day. Yeah, bougie. Bougie. Tell you what. Let's go to the PFC Performance Hotline. First time caller, Peyton Sellers. Peyton, it's Bob Dillner, Casey LeJoy, Zach Evans, Mark Keeler, and more. Good morning to you. Good morning, guys. How's everything going today? Pretty good. good. Now, does a Virginia boy go to um, I Fly, Sky, whatever the heck it is, <laughs> Top Golf, that sort of thing? Is that is that in your realm of your world? I don't even think y'all know where Southern Virginia is. We have nothing like that. We have to go to Charlotte to go to Top Golf. We have to go to Virginia Beach to go to Top Golf or something like that. We basically just hang around the farm or, or, or race cars. Well, I want to know, you know, because I'm just craving to go to Clarence's Steakhouse. It's one of my favorite places I've ever been to. Had, uh, you know, breakfast there years ago with Jimmy Spencer. You know, do, do you go to Clarence's much? You know, I used to love to go there for breakfast. They got the best break, breakfast just down the road from Martinsville Speedway. We do. Clarence is about 30 miles from my house here in Danville. And uh, we make it over there quite a bit during the winter and things. We'll go over there on Sunday afternoons and and then obviously if it's a race in town, we're we're hanging out at Clarence's. So uh, you know everybody tells me, oh, we want to go to Clarence's. Is this some big nice steakhouse? They they think when they, <laughs> they when they see Clarence's, the history that goes behind it, they're thinking Ruth Chris, you know. And I'm like, that's not what you're getting, guys. You're getting Southern home cooking with excellent service, and and that's what you got, you know. And that's what people want. And man, it's amazing to me. I go in there and they turn the tables over two or three times during lunch, and they're busy at two in the afternoon, three in the afternoon when no other restaurant is. Well, Zach Evans is our late model stock car aficionado. I don't think you've been to Clarence's Steakhouse, have you, Zach? I have not, actually. That That is he just led, sacrilegious. Especially yes. considering how many times I've been to South Boston, been to Martinsville, and not a once. That, that is sad, been. isn't it, Peyton? It is. It is. You, we'll have to. You, you just let us know. When you're coming back for the Valley Star 300 at Martinsville, you, you let us know. We'll, we'll serve you up. 
All right, I'll I'll, I'll keep that in mind, Peyton, because I as I'm sure I will be there for the for the Valley Star Credit Union 300. But let's talk about right. this weekend, Peyton. Uh, Thursday night, picking up the win at Langley. Um, it was an interesting race in the sense that it, it was the replacement for the Denny Hamlin race, and you kind of hmm? you know made a, a comment about that in Victory Lane about how Langley kind of had to step up on <laughs> short notice to put together that deal. Um, what was it like to to take that win? Well, first of all, I caught a lot of heat for not going to Orange County on Saturday because that was, you know, that's kind of a home track for me. I grew up racing there, won a championship there in limited sportsman years ago. I caught a lot of heat for not going to the cars event there. And long story short, we're building a new race car right now, trying to get it finished up. And all of my extra funds were going toward building that new car. And, and we had had the Denny Hamlin showdown on our radar for a long time. We ran extremely well there last year, um, running the top five all night, then went back for the Hampton Heat and run second. And, um, we were kind of, you know, that was, that was a date that we had set a, a long time ago. And, um, you know, let's face it. I finished fourth in the national points last year. Langley pays national points. It was paying, you know, good money as well. So for me going doing the cars race was a, was a, a bucket list thing too, racing at my home track in Orange County there for, for that kind of cash that they put up. But, um, you know, Bill Mullis and those guys at Langley put on a good event as well. And I knew as soon as I got back in out of victory lane, one of my guys said where I think it was Matt Weaver, somebody made a comment about, you know, me kind of pointing out that Denny Hamlin dropped the showdown. I meant nothing by that. Denny Hamlin's a friend of ours. He He's done a lot of good things for short track racing. I know he hated dropping the event, but I'm, I am glad that Bill Mullis and his team stepped up to the plate. A lot of guys had rooms booked. They had things going. They had, you know, sponsors sponsoring that race. And, uh, for those guys to be able to step up and find the funding to put on that event was, was unbelievable. Now, you know, moving forward, I hope Denny Hamlin will come back and do it. It was no slight to him. And I don't think Bill Mullis and him, you know, put it out there trying to be a slight to Denny Hamlin for not having the race. Denny's um, got the money. He could do it. Yeah, it, exactly. So, you know, there, I know everybody wants to get somebody else to, to pay for a racing. Uh, you know, all of us do. All of us want to have, you know, a free ride and that sort of thing. And, and Denny wasn't able to come up with the funding to do it. So, um, Bill and him stepped up and made it happen. So, you know, hats off to those guys, but it was definitely not a slight to Denny Hamlin because he's, he's done it for many years now. And, uh, you know, hopefully they'll be able to come back and do it again. As, as for the race itself, uh, I was watching it. I'll admit I was splitting my attention very evenly between the, the race on fans choice and a certain hockey game that my favorite team lost, but we won't talk about that. Um, it, for the first part of the race, you know, Philip Morris was kind of running away with it, and then he had some issues, and it just seemed to be one of those nights where, and as often the case is with these 200-lap late mall stock races, where you just had to be there at the end, and then you made it count when it mattered. Um, and you've gotten really good at that kind of thing over the years. You won South, the South Boston 200 last year and, and stuff like that. What is it about those races that just plays into your driving style? Well, obviously you know i'm 35 years old which is i i like to think i'm still a pretty young guy but in this racing world i'm one of the older guys out there every week but um yeah i think just being smart not not putting the car in bad spots early in the race you know knowing hey i might have qualified you know a little off today but let's let's be there at the end let's keep the fenders on it let's not put it in a bad spot let's take advantage of our brakes that we get and dial the car in and, and hc my brother is my crew chief and he does i put him up against anybody for for dialing the car in throughout the breaks throughout a race you know that sort of thing so uh you know this past weekend i did not feel like we had the best car we were a tenth off the pole qualified six and was very competitive but once the race started i was like you know this car is not too bad let's just kind of be here and and, and be smart philip he qualified on a pole and he done his best to blow the tires off of it in the first part of the race because <laughs> he did it man he he got a straightaway lead over C.E. Falk and, and Josh Berry and myself, we were kind of tagging along three in a row, and Phillips is straight away out. And um, when the tires went on his car, he, he dropped pretty quick there. So uh, Josh Berry and C.E. were racing pretty hard. We were all kind of tracking along and putting laps on the board. Uh, something happened with a lap car, and C.E. got into the back of Josh and turned him around and, and cut his left rear tire, and he got a, he got a new left rear and two new right sides with, with 40 to go, and we got new right sides. So it's set up for a pretty good race there toward the end of that race. And, um, we were, we were sitting in a good spot. We, we led the last 40, 45 laps and, um, 
you know, brought it home. So, you know, track position was key, being able to qualify well, kind of keeping our nose clean and, and being there for the end of the race. And when it come time to, to have to use it up, you know, we were, we were in good position to do that. You know, Peyton, late model stock car racing has really been uh, at the forefront of short track racing here over the past month or two with this whole thing. Uh, with Lee Pulliam and, and Philip Morris, uh, you, you were at South Boston. What did you see? I don't want to keep, you know, beating a dead horse here, but uh, we haven't talked to you about it. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you see? Did you think the the penalties were justified? They were they were fair, or did would you have liked to seen something different? You know, I, I'm very torn on that. I was just glad to be kind of out in front of that and and not be you know caught up into those things. Um, when Philip and Lee got to reckon, it was kind of behind me and I was kind of away from that. But when you sit back and look at it, um, you know, those guys caught a lot of heat and, you know, verbally with more so than, than physically, you know, obviously, you know, Forrest ran out on the track and, and shouldn't have done that. And, you know, he got his penalty. His penalty came from not having a NASCAR license. And I don't know, you know, I don't think they were going to hit him too hard until they found out that he had signed in without a NASCAR license. And that's when NASCAR pretty much stepped in and said, you know, we got to do something. If our guys are signing in like they have a license and don't, then, you know, we got to do something about that. Um, from the best I could tell, Philip and Lee's penalties came from kind of their crew members shoving and pushing and, and the drivers not controlling their crew members. Um, you know, I know Kathy Rice kind of spoke up that she didn't agree with the penalties and, you know, suspending them until their payment, you know, until their fine was paid. It, it, it sounds a lot worse than it really is. You know, at the end of the day, he pays his fine, comes on back to the racetrack. So, um, you know, Lee, Lee pretty much just took him out. Philip, Philip moved him up the track a little bit and, and Lee stuffed him square in the back bumper and, and backed him in the fence. And, um, you know, I understand forest frustrations i understand uh you know the pit crew is getting involved because it's you know it's never good when you got one car trashed in a fence just off of somebody plowing through a guy that was that was not racing it was just simply crashing you know so um that's my take on it my take is you know let's go out there and race hard let's let's beat bang you can slide a guy out of the way all you want but when you just center him up and send him in the fence and there hadn't been any prior you know, it didn't like it went back a couple of races or anything like that. It was pretty much Philip caught Lee, moved him up, drove by him, and Lee went to the next corner and backed him in the fence. So, you know, I, I'm I'm a racer, but it's got to be a little more give and take than that. I like how they worded the the penalty, honestly, and and I think a little bit different, Peyton. I, I think they they uh, said he can't get a license for the next year, basically, is what they did with that, uh, because you know they didn't have any other leg to stand on because they couldn't, mm-hmm. you know, you know, say uh, he's banned, he's suspended. Well, he, he wasn't there. He didn't have a NASCAR license, which was actually a really weird <laughs> right. thing because. Uh, any race track NASCAR wise that I go into uh, in my career, you have to have a NASCAR license if you're going to be a crew member. But that that's another point. But mm-hmm. you know, definitely an interesting situation. Not good for anybody with anybody going out in the racetrack. And I, I think that was the biggest yeah. thing there for sure. It was. It was you, exactly. You know. But you know, I, I got. I, I was listening to you before. How old are you now? Thirty-five. Okay. And the interesting thing about Peyton is, you know, he's been around for a while. Now, he, now he's experienced, veteran, right? So, uh, you know, you've been part of this short track draft that we have on Speed Fifty One. Uh, years gone by, and, and mm-hmm. you know, I Absolutely. believe you were top ten, if not top five, in the draft one year. Obviously, mm-hmm. battling for that national championship and so forth. And you know, what was that like for you as a younger fella to be part of the short track draft on Speed Fifty One? You know, it's amazing to me how many short track fans tune in to Speed 51 and keep up with it week after week. People know what's happening, and, and that's their go-to website to be able to check in on things. So when you guys ramped up here, you know, years ago and started picking up more late model stock stuff, I know that Supers are kind of your, your bread and butter, but your late model stocks is equally as part of that right now. And um, it, It's a good source to go to to kind of figure out, you know, what the temperature of the sport is right now because y'all's stories normally – kind of give the true temperature of it more so than the polished up, you know, version that, you know, people normally give. Well, so, um, being a, being a part of that draft and being a, a part of it, I was very fortunate. You know, I won the 2005 national championship and that kind of earned me a spot with children's racing in the Chevrolet development program in 2006. And it gave me an opportunity. And, 
at the end of the day, um, that's the way racing is. Late model stock racing is pure racing. There's no politics. It's going out there, it's building the fastest car, it's winning the race and going home. You know, you don't get into the multi-million dollar sponsorships and trying to find this or trying to find that, you know, smoothing over this guy and who your dad was and who your grandpa was and all that. Late model stock racing is pure racing. When you've got guys that, you know, like Philip Morris, like Lee Pulliam, you know, you've got young guys coming up, you've got older guys that have settled in and kind of found a home. You've got a lot of different angles there. And, and that's why I like late model stock racing personally. I love that standpoint for sure. And, you know, I think you've, you've sold us, you know, Zach Evans is over here going, yeah, yeah. More late model stock car racing on speed 51. We're, <laughs> we're a hundred percent short track racing. We cover it all dirt or pavement. Yeah. Uh, but, but you're right. You know, there, there's a lot of super late model coverage on here. Race 22 also covers, you know, um, late model stock car racing. They do a good job. They have a different, you know, uh, approach to their coverage than we do. Um, and there's some other people that dabble around in it as well, but you know, here, here's what I'm going to say to you, Peyton. If you want us to be at an event, uh, you know, we've known each other for a long time. Just let us know, yeah. and, and maybe we'll show up. Because Zach Evans, who's our Southeast editor, he's a huge late model stock car guy. So, you know, and, and here's honestly, I, I, will, I will, you know, full disclosure here. Some of the late model stock car racing, uh, we, we, you know, it's not like we don't cover it, but we don't go to as many of the events because NASCAR has so many restrictions on our coverage in which we do. And that's yeah. full transparency there. And I understand to some degree why they have that. But at the same time, if they want to promote short track racing a little bit more, I think it would be advantageous for them to open up uh, their their rules to allow us to come and do what we do for the rest of short track racing. So if I were to speak to NASCAR, and I hope that they're listening, uh, I would I would say, hey, you know, open up those rules. Uh, understand that those TV rights rules, to some degree, are for NASCAR's big series, and they really don't don't have anything to do with the smaller series. Uh, these short track stars in the NASCAR Wheel and All American Series and the tours and so forth, they need more. They need more than they're getting right now. So we would love to see that. And I, I hope that they listen to that message because we at Speed51.com would love to be able to cover more NASCAR Wheel and All American Series stuff. Uh, getting back to this draft, Peyton, as I go off on my little rampage right there, and it was a calm one, but uh, I was just told by Brandon Paul, you were the number two pick in 2008 in the short track draft. Do you remember that, waking up and, I, and seeing your name? I do remember that. I do remember that. We had come off some good runs. We had run really well in the West Series, and we were going to run some East races that year. That was kind of leading up, and we run well in the East Series as well. And, uh, you know, I, I do remember that. So, um you know, it's, it's a feather in your cap because when you go to the track, people are talking about it. And, um, you know, it, it lets me know that other people are taking notice, you know, that what you're doing is not just a, a local thing. And, you know, we, we get hung up thinking that local short track racing is local. But, man, I, I keep a pretty good check on what's happening on the West Coast. And uh, Derek Thorne's a friend of mine that runs out there. And, you know, I like to know what's going on around these other tracks around the country. And, um, you know, I have to tune into you guys to figure that out a lot of times. So, keep doing what you're doing there for sure. And um, it's nice knowing that I'm being compared to drivers throughout the country because, Hey, the best drivers in the country are racing Saturday nights. They're not racing all on Sundays. So uh, it's good to be compared to those guys. I couldn't agree more. By the way, we have a question coming in from Justin Mincy after that big win at the grassroots 200 at Langley. He wants to know what that does to your team and does it give you a boost of confidence looking forward to the 2019 Virginia triple crown championship? It does. It does. It gives us a lot of confidence going into, you know, South Boston in July for the first leg of the triple crown and then going from there. And, uh, you know, I don't want to think it right now, but man, it, it makes you think about national points. It makes you think about a lot of things right now, but at the end of the day, you better just stay focused. And, you know, we, we've got a good, good start at South Boston. We're leading the points right now, but we're racing against Philip Morris and Lee Pulliam every week too. So, uh, and, and not in addition to the local guys that run there every week, they're good guys, you know, Thomas Scott, um, you know, a bunch of the guys that, that run good there. So competition is different than ever right now at South Boston, but, when you can go away from your home track and pull a win in like we did this past Thursday night, uh, it puts a lot of things in your mind and you better just stay focused on what you're doing. You better focus on winning the track title and winning local races. And, you know, the national cards will fall into place as the season goes. I, t I tell all my guys here in the shop, Hey, we're not even talking about that until 
you know, the end of June. At the end of June, if we're competitive in the national points, we'll start ramping up, traveling a few more places and trying to get more starts and, and seeing if you can't put the wins together. Because at the end of the day, you got to be able to win one for every two or three starts that you have in order to win a national title. And, and you mentioned the national title and mentioned South Boston. I was, you know, looking over the results before we brought you on here today. I knew you would run well at South Boston this year, but I didn't realize three seconds and a first in four races. He- pretty healthy points lead there. Uh, that, and that would definitely be huge towards getting that national championship, being able to pick up the South Boston title. Absolutely. South Boston is pulling cars every week. And, um, you know, Dominion's pulling cars every week. Motor Mile's getting ready to kick back off this year. So they're pulling good car count. And, um, you know, but to, to win at South Boston and run competitive there week in and week out, we've been very consistent to this point. Um, you know, Lee's won, a, Lee's won one. I think Phillips won two. And I've won one. So, um, you know, we, we've got to take care of business at home first. And if we can continue to do that and, and keep the consistency up and, and travel around on an off week or two and maybe pick up a win, that, that's where the cards start, you know, falling into place by June, July, and, and that sort of time period. So right now we've just got to focus on the 100 lapper this weekend at South Boston and uh, try to go out there and beat those guys. If we do that, everything will go go as it's supposed to. Well, Peyton, we appreciate you coming on the morning bull ring. Always good to talk to you and, and hopefully we'll see you at some of those big events coming up. Uh, Zach Evans, I know has that circled on his calendar and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you maybe even having a bologna burger together at South Boston Speedway. Man, that sounds like a plan. I know, we, you know South Boston's got a lot of stuff going on. They had a big modified tour race here the other week with like 33 cars show up. So that was a huge event for them. They've got the double headers coming up for the, you know, K&N cars coming up next month and, They've got a lot of good things going, so I'm just I'm, I'm kind of fortunate to have it so close to our home here to be able to go down there and race. But man, we um, we're looking forward to getting back to Motor Mile and Dominion, and even maybe getting down to Myrtle Beach and some different tracks. So Zach, I hope to see you soon, and um, you let me know when you want to go by Clarence this one day. I'll, I'll, it'll be my treat. I will be <laughs> sure to take you up on that, sir. <laughs> All right, Bob, you guys have a good day. Thank you for everything you do, and y'all keep y'all keep working on those late model stocks. You got it, buddy. Keep on having a great season for sure. Peyton Sellers, uh, former NASCAR Wheeling All-American Series National Champion, uh, South Boston, uh, just uh, just unbelievable star up there in the late model stock car wars and always so much fun to talk to Peyton Sellers because, you know, he's a great racer, but he's just a good guy as well. Yes, he is. And he's going to buy Zach Evans lunch, apparently. That'd be like... Clarence's! Yeah. And that's, Love it! That's like when I went to Smoke Pit with JD and he bought me and Corey's lunch and you were jealous. I yes. Could, I could see it through oh, your yes. Snapchat. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, and Mark, you would love, honestly, Clarence's. Because I know you love steak and eggs. They have the best steak and eggs in the country, bar none. Oh, he just sold me on the fact that it's not one of these polished, you know, steak houses where everything's perfect and, and you know, cloth napkins and all that crap. I don't need any of that. Yeah, it's Heck, I'll eat it with plastic silverware. I don't care. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. Hey, the funny thing is I was looking at Zach when you brought up clearances, and I'm like, where did that come from? And Zach's pointing over here at my screen, and I'm like, what? And I'm staring at him. And we look over, and there it is right on his fire suit. <laughs> I was like, oh, that makes sense now. There you go. So that was See, perfect. You never know what I'm going to say, right? Nope, That's nope. That's basically what it is. Tell you what, we have a lot coming up here on the morning bull ring. We're going to talk to Jeremy Doss this morning. Uh, we are going to talk to Preston Peltier this morning. We've got the Easter Bunny 150 coming up at Hickory Motor Speedway for the Brawl All-Star Series. We're going to be talking to Dave C. from Virginia Motor Speedway with the King of the Commonwealth coming up. Uh, Jeremy Doss had a great battle with the aforementioned Derek Thorne out west in the SRL Tour. So, so much coming up, including a great interview with a legend now in remission from cancer. That's next here on The Morning Bull Ring.
Uh, remember to be a subscriber of the Speed 51 Video Network. Nine ninety nine a month, seventy nine ninety nine a year. We understand uh, that's some coin, that's some change, but at the same time, you get so much for becoming a premium member of Speed 51. All the videos, more than 3,000 already in our archives and videos updated daily. Uh, you've been part of that Speed 51 video network for a couple of years, Casey. And uh, by the way, you did a pretty, pretty good job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just got a random thing on Facebook. Tanner yeah. Gray's birthday today. A lot of short trackers' birthday Really? Today. I didn't realize Tanner it was Gray, Tanner Gray's Jordan birthday. Anderson's birthday today. And Jesse Little. Jesse Little. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Tanner Gray, I saw him yesterday at Sandra Salem Cole Speedway well. for the Arkham Menard Series. He finished seventh. So the straight liner uh, really starting to learn. And he's so tough on himself, honestly. He's like, man, I just need to do a better job. And I said, man, you come from driving a car straight, and now you go <laughs> got to go around four corners every lap. Uh, you know, you're doing a darn good job. And, and, and he's learning the ropes and doing it the right way under some great guidance as well. So I expect a lot from Taylor and Tanner Gray. Um, parents very supportive as well. Met them yesterday a little bit. Um, they could always go back to the NHRA, yep. but at the same time, they're trying to conquer the circle track world as well. You don't want to fight Shane Gray. He doesn't look like a person you want to fight. All right. Well, tell you what, we're going to go back to break. We were just trying to set up the great interview that we have coming up for you. Uh, David Rogers, uh, we'll be hearing from him next here on the Morning Bull Ring. Speed 51's video network, where the battles are legendary. Get the full picture on short track racing. We'll take you behind the scenes. Um, he's just a meathead. He's always the same way. Your track, your driver, your sport, your passion. Dirt, late models, modifieds, and more. Race highlights, recaps, interviews, and thousands of on-demand videos. Speed 51 Network, short track racers home for the best video coverage. Hey race fans, download the new speed51.com app today. Breaking news, feature stories, the unfiltered podcast, live race coverage, schedules, and more right at your fingertips. Download it today on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Well, now that we have a brand new website, check it out, speed51.com, all new. New look, don't be alarmed when you go there because it is completely unlike anything we have done before, and we hope that you enjoy it. Bob Dillner, Casey LaJoy, 8.08 in the morning. Got a lot of good guests coming up here on the morning bullring, including some calls out west. We're going to wake some people up out of bed because they're very important to talk to. But first, before we do all that, let's go to In the News, get you caught up with everything going on, as I always say, in the world of short track racing with Zach Evans. Hello. So... We'll start off with some more races that we didn't cover in the first segment. Starting off with Stuart Friesen winning the 71-lap Carl Van Horn tribute at Orange County Fair Speedway over the weekend. Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze picking up the win in the big block modifies over Brett the Jet Hearn. More of those dirt track nicknames. Yeah. I still like Stuart. He's so cold he's freezing. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> Mr. Freeze is better. That, that definitely needs some workshopping, for sure. It does, a little bit. Billy Pouch Jr., also a winner this weekend, won the 30-lap modified feature at New Egypt Speedway. Started 16th, worked his way to the front. Busy man in that in that race. Jersey. Jersey. I went to New Egypt Speedway when it was a paved track. Now it's a dirt track. Which one's better? Uh, I haven't been to it since it's been a dirt track. Oh. Y'all have to ask Jimmy Blewett. I thought you were going to give a snap answer there. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. I was waiting for I it. don't know. I'm not sure. Verdict Verdict is still out for Bob. It Dillon. has more nicknames now. <laughs> That's true. World of Outlaws Sprint Car Series 1 race, unfortunately, did not happen at Devil's Bowl Speedway this weekend, but their first race of the weekend did. Logan Shuhart picking up the win. I don't know if you saw the highlights on, on YouTube or anything like that, Dirt Vision, but... Uh, he had a pretty nice little battle with uh, Darren Pittman as he was working his way through the field and then had to battle with his teammate Jacob Allen for the win, ultimately picking up the victory at that famed dirt track in Texas. Is, it, is that what you got? That's, I mean, I would, that's news. Uh, we also have 
plenty more coming the, on Speed the, the, 51. Then at the end, you say, and that's the news this morning on Speed 51. Hey, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll work on that. By the way, I you, missed that note. You missed one. I did? Yeah, you missed one. Hit me one. with it. Listen, David Stremme had an unbelievable battle at Virginia Motor Speedway last weekend. Um, I, I forget the gentleman's name that he was battling with because uh, it's not in front of me right now, but I watched the highlights. And what a race at Virginia Motor Speedway. David Stremme, lethal chassis, getting the dirt modified win at Virginia Motor Speedway. That place is racing. Was it this weekend or was it the weekend before? No, it was this past weekend. Okay, I, I, yeah, I think it was like... I think it was a Thursday race, honestly. Yeah. So, and, and, and he talked about Peyton Sellers when the Grassroots 200. That was on a Thursday. It was on. So Thursday. I'm gonna say that that was, was on a Thursday. I was gonna say this this past weekend. That was late model stock. That's why. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna make it about that. Yeah. Now. Yeah. It, it, well, yeah. So, by the way, Mark has admitted to starting to like dirt racing. I never. <laughs> I never didn't like dirt. I prefer asphalt or pavement racing. You know why he prefers asphalt racing over dirt racing? Because dirt is dirty. Yeah, he doesn't have to clean as much. Right. Very true. Which yeah. I, I completely understand. I don't mind getting dirty. Well, since we've mentioned David Strimi, I am going to make a shameless plug here from a story for last week. Um, but David Strimi, lethal chassis, put was part of a deal to put together a chassis for Chris Morris, who was a, a racer down in Texas. We did the story on Speed 51. This was immediately two weekends ago, but he picked up his first career win in that car that is uh, made accessible for him as a paralyzed racer. He actually uh, got hurt training to uh, make his Supercross debut. He had worked his way up the motocross ranks to become an AMA Supercross rider in the 250cc series before he had that incident. But instead of getting down, he got back to work, found a way to get in a race car, and then worked out a deal with David Stremme and Lethal Chassis to make an even better race car. And now he's a winner, and that story's on Speed 51. And I just wanted to plug that real quick because it's just a really cool story. And and uh, it was a fun interview to do with Chris. You know, he was a guy that, uh, you know, he had every reason in the world to be mad at the world. Uh, but that's not him. And that's why he was a winner a couple weekends ago down in Texas. Well, shameless plug for you. Shameless plug for me. The Joy of Seating actually built the seat for that driver. So, uh, hey, you get to give me a little shameless plug for the Joy of Seating. But, Moving on now as we get to talk to the man, a icon in the short track racing world, the gentle giant David Rogers. Uh, the world of short track racing was heartbroken to hear that he was uh, diagnosed with cancer, but now in remission, and our very own Bob Dillner got the chance to talk to him. Welcome to Speed 51's Unfiltered Podcast. I'm Bob Dillner. We've taken a little break with this podcast, but it is returning in 2019, but in a different form. Uh, in the past, we've had a gathering of people around the desk in Studio 51 just talking about things with short track racing. We may still do that from time to time, but we are also going to sit down with some of the newsmakers in the sport that we all love so much. And that kicks off our first episode of 2019. David Rogers, we call him the Gentle Giant. We all know him from the state of Florida, multi-time New Smyrna Speedway track champion. He's won hundreds of races in late model racing throughout his career. Well, earlier this year, he was actually diagnosed with cancer, lymphoma, and he has battled and he has shared with us some great news. And that's the subject of the first unfiltered podcast of the year. All right, David, uh, everybody's going to want to know, how are you doing? Well, really good. Um, <clears throat> I went and had a PET scan done on last Tuesday, and it showed uh, no hot spots, which means I'm in complete remission already. And that was after two treatments, and now I just had the third treatment. So um, I got to continue with the next three treatments. And uh, the reason for that is uh, if you got one cell left in you, in a period of six weeks because the stuff's so aggressive in a period of six weeks, I could be back in worse shape than I was to start with, according to the, to the doctors there. But, but, um, you know, if right now I'm basically, um, the lymphoma is in complete remission. So there's not really any trace of it left. So that was super duper good news. Um, you know, I'll still have to go through the whole treatments and, uh, then I've, I've, you know, they did the ileostomy because 
kind of sort of the the surgeon kind of panicked when he got in there i had such large tumors that um he should have left them in there which kind of sounds crazy but the type of lymphoma that i have uh was so aggressive that that's what made the tumor so large and that was what what was causing the pain and and what have you so he just made a decision to remove all that and when he did finding out it was lymphoma they found out that they sh- they could have treated it with the chemo and not had to do all the removal that they did but they did and i'm living with it and it'll be fine you know that'll just be a, actually after the after i'm through with the treatments then it'll probably be another four to six weeks before we can do reconstructive surgery and hook me all back up and then two or three weeks after that i should be good to go again So when you heard the words remission, what was your feeling? Kind of that, (laughs) you know, it just took me. It um, it broke me up like it did now. Kind of the same way when they told me I had cancer, you know, it's like, oh, oh, I I just raced two weeks ago. I don't have cancer, you know, so I kind of. It, and then when they told me in two weeks that it was in remission, and I said, well, what does that mean? You know, that means that you've killed part of it, right? You know, or or it's the, the treatment's working. And they said, no, it's working exceptionally well. And that's what they told me to start with. They said the stuff that I have is so aggressive that it's going to be. And they said, but that's a good thing. And I'm like, yeah, right. It sounds good to me. You know, it sounds to me like I need to cancel Christmas, you know. And they said, well. No, it's good because it's so aggressive. When we put the chemo in, we, when we put the medicines in, it's going to attack the medicines, and that's what it's supposed to do because the medicines will kill it. And I'm like, well, it doesn't make sense to me, but neither does all these new setups that I'm running in a race car, so let's go for it, you know? So, uh, yeah, it, 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 it cracked me up. It really did. It, it made me appreciate. <clears throat> Sorry. It's okay. <clears throat> It made me appreciate all the prayers that I've been getting. David, you've had an unbelievable support team. Uh, there's a hashtag, Defeat It David. Um, we've seen the stickers on race cars. And uh, I'll make this question just a little bit longer so you can collect yourself a little bit. Sure. But I, I think, you know, if you look, I'm sure you've gotten calls, texts, uh, you've seen some of the stuff on uh, the various forms of media and so forth. There were so many people praying, you know, just pulling for you. Uh, what were some of those conversations, some of those texts, and, and what did all that mean to you? Well, it's it's from all over the country. It's from people that I didn't even know knew God or praying. You know, when you're around the racetrack, it's, it's you know, everybody thanks God for this and th- a safe race and stuff but but i I don't know it's maybe unfair to say that you don't because we race saturday nights and sundays and you know um there's not a lot of church there's a little church at the at the racetrack that that people go to and stuff but you don't really really realize how powerful people are and it's everywhere and i've got calls from everywhere i've got cards and letters from everywhere in the u.s people that have been fans of mine for 30 years that I didn't even know. But they've watched me race every speed week, you know. We missed you speed weeks, you know. This is the first time in probably, gosh, it's probably in 45 years that I didn't run a speed week, you know. And there's people that were down for, you know, 35 of them or or people that were, their mom and dads brought them down for speed weeks. And I was one of their fans, you know, I was because I was there every year. So, you know, I, even if some people have told me, you know, you, you weren't my favorite 30 years ago, but you're the only one that's still around. So we root for you and they always pick a newcomer, you know, they probably won't be here next year, but we know you'll be here the following year. So we're your fan, you know, and that just makes me feel great. Well, you're an iconic figure. I mean, I've been watching you forever and I know a lot of people on our staff have as well. So we were just overjoyed when we heard that great news. Um, 
you know, what were some of the, you know, calls or texts or who you received it from that surprised you? And maybe it was good to reunite or, you know, whatever it may be. What were some of the things that, that was really, you know, made you feel good and, and was close to your heart? Well, it was like Ronnie Sanders, for example. You know, he kind of went through the colon part of it and, you know, he called. And Ronnie and I have known each other for years and years and years if Ronnie and I've been real good friends no but we, we're racetrack friends you know we speak we race together we probably fought a little bit back when we were racing together back in the 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 bump and grind days and what have you you know but he's we've always been friends and for somebody like that to take the time to reach out call you and say hey you can do this I went through it it's not easy it's not fun but I made it through it you know and there is a there is a light at the other end of the tunnel, you know. So people like that that give you uplifting conversations of what they've had, you know. Um, have people that have called it out of the grandstands that, that that have talked to Steve Holland in the stands and you know, we talk to Steve every year and you know, I had my wife had this, had this kind of surgery and yeah, it's hard or she had breast cancer and she's through it now or she's got, she still has to go get treatments, you know, just those touching stories. And there's so many people out there that, that carry on with life, you know, and then you hear it, you get stories about, you, you have to hear the ones too, that, you know, they lost a loved one because of it, you know, because of cancer gets on them and, you know, and, and, and you hear the story and you go, Oh my gosh, I, you know, I really don't want to hear this part of it, but, it's part of it. You know, it's the reality of it. When I, when I first got it, I, that was something I had to struggle with, you know, because like I said, I'd raced two weeks before I went and had the surgery and the, my surgery was supposed to be a little small deal. I mean, we were considering me racing speed weeks was, was the plan. And then, you know, then it went, it snowballed. And so I could see how people's stories meant so much to them and how they meant something to me too, you know, that, I understood it. I understood where you're coming from. You you start out you start out in a hole because like anytime somebody comes and tells you you got cancer, you know, and, and I always thought lymphoma, you know, over all the years of my life, if you had lymphoma, you were just done. You know? And probably twenty years ago you may have been done. But the medicines and things have changed to such that um, you know, and, and then I hear those stories, you know, well, I lost this loved one, you know, and, and they were way simpler situations than what I was in. So, I mean, those are, those are downtrodden. I mean, those bring you down, but then again, it makes you feel that, Hey, you got to fight and all these prayers and people that are fighting for me, lift me up, lift me out of that hole. And that's really what's happened. I lost my dad to cancer, so I understand what you're talking about. But me, as the son of a person who lost somebody from cancer, um, it, it makes me, you know, even more concerned about people that do. And and then the stories like yours are just marvelous, honestly. Uh, you know it's a blessing from above. Uh, sure. And, and I think the biggest thing, David, that, that I can feel, not only from the community— but man, your team, your wife, uh, your family were so behind you every step of this entire situation. And I know it's got to be hard to talk about, but at the same time, I know that's very important to you. Yeah, it is. And it's emotional. You know, um, I was never a big crybaby, but I, I blame it on the, the, uh, the chemo. You know, I cry at TV <laughs> shows now and um, somebody wins a, a race and, and, you know, I watch on your, your, your stuff, you know, watch races and, and somebody wins and sees, see some of them little kids and how happy they are about winning a race. And it just cracks me up. I go to crime, you know, and it's like, like now, you know, I'm just happy about it. You know, it just, it just, my emotions are close to the surface now. You know, I know what my wife used to always tell me when I go, why are you crying? We, we just got, we just wrecked tonight. It's no big deal. We can fix it. Well, I don't know. I just, I'm just crying. I'm like, geez, woman. Now, now I'm on, now I cry before she does. So, <laughs> <laughs> but she has, like you said, she has been a trooper. Um, 
you know, all the people at my work have been, all my friends at work have been super good to me. Uh, my brother, not so much. He's kind of running me off from my business that I've been <laughs> running for 35 years. But, but after, after he finds out that I'm not dying, maybe he'll let me, let me do my job again, but we'll be all right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's Bob, it's, it's, everybody has been pushing. I've had very little downtime. I've had very little times that I was depressed that, you know, I don't want to be here. I just, I, I give, I give up. I'm tired of, I'm tired of this fight. I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of feeling bad. You know, I went forever, you know, I, I've, I've wrecked so many race cars and, and pretty bad wrecks and not so bad ones. And, and it's kind of like every day after the wreck, you know, the first day's bad, the second day's the worst day. And then after that, you start getting a little better. And, but this stuff wasn't that way. It was every day you would be a little better. And then the next day you would be way worse than you was two days before. And that's hard to cope with because it's it's like you're not you're not getting fixed. And and being a being a race car person, you get real impatient, I find. You know, I, I that's been one of my virtues, you know, and I've always I've looked at this thing that, that I'm doing now as kind of like a uh the the snowball derby. You know, I always start in the back of the snowball derby and that's how I figure this thing. You know, I started in the back. I'm as low as I can go. There's maybe a two or three people lower than me, but slowly work your way to the front. You know, don't worry about getting there in 10 laps. Just slowly work your way to the, to the front. And the way I see it, we've had two, three pit stops now. And we just, put, we've been putting two tires on probably the next one. We'll put four on and we'll really try to go to the front, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so we've just been, you know, and, and Ricky, I, I probably need to send my uh, the the bottles of me all hooked to the chemotherapy. There's five different bottles that they hooked me to. And the first time it took eight hours, it was a long pit stop, but they've got quicker on that. Um, the last one I did was like four and a half hours of different, I call it rat poison that they're putting in me. But so I probably need to send those copies of those chemicals to Ricky to see if they're approved or not. Yeah. He's having he's having little issues with motors and stuff. I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to add I don't want to add added fuels to him. But but he probably needs to approve these before I come back racing. <laughs> well, I could definitely see that you've been paying attention to everything that's going on for sure, and I think that's pretty cool. But you know, you, you kind of alluded to it. Um, you know, for those that haven't been through the process, how difficult is it? Well, you know, the the whole process is is really tough. You start out the, you know, you, you start out in this, okay, I've got cancer, you know, and, and, and it's like everything else. You, you hear a few of the good stories, but you hear so many more of the bad stories. And like you said, you've lost people to cancer. Everybody, every family that you talk to that, that I'm around have lost people to cancer, you know? So you start out so low that you think you're going to be, okay, I'm, okay, I'm, my family is going to be on the losing end too. You know, you feel sorry for them. You know, I've got it and I know when it's over, it's over for me, but they've got to live with, with that, that feeling, you know, so that's, you start out real low. When I went to my first treatment and they go over the, you know, what they do and how they do it. And each one of these chemicals they put in your body is so powerful that they give it that's why it took like eight and a half hours for me to get the first treatment because they have to slowly give you each one to see how your body's going to react to it and so they don't want to give it to you too fast because if you have too much of a reaction and they give you too much then they can't reverse that part so so the the medicines can kill you you know they can they can put you into shock and they can do things so they slowly give you that treatment and then you you have people that are in rooms next to you. And the last time I was there, I was in a room with four diff, four people at the same time or three other people at the same time. But luckily, the first two visits I had, I was in a, a private room. But you can still people hear people moaning and getting sick. And so the treatments work different for everybody else. Everybody gets a little different treatment. When I go in in the in the morning to get a tr treatment, they do all my blood work, 
and they adjust my medicines to my system for that day. They're all the same medicines. They're just given to me at different doses and different quantities and time frames. So that's a long process. And you're just laying there with these fluids. And, and luckily for me, Bob, I've not had the first reaction, negative to reaction to any of the medicines. Um, so it's worked great for me. It works for lots of people. You see, you know, it's heartbreaking to see older people coming in that, that are so much worse off than me. And then you see the, the ones that really crush me are the little kids, you know, that, that, that are, that are fighting it. So those, all those things are in your head. You know, you're, you're not alone in this battle. There's a lot of people fighting the same battles that you are and, it doesn't help with your mentality. You know, you see them and you see they're way worse than you are and you talk to them and, you know, you try to, you try to bring them up and it's easy for me to bring somebody up when I'm in remission, you know, and that's what I got to try to do. It's hard, easy to bring them, try to bring them up and they're looking at you. Like I looked at people when I first was in there and they were telling me, Oh, I'm doing good, you know, and you know, I've been doing this for 10 years and you're like, oh my gosh, you've been doing the same thing for 10 years. And some people have been doing, getting the treatment monthly for 10 years and they're still going strong and happy with their lives. So, so the, the whole process is a, is a very, very, very wild roller coaster ride. It's, it's a, it's a snowball derby extraordinaire. <laughs> it really is you know you're, you're you're in a crash or you miss that crash and you're happy you miss that crash and the next restart you get door slammed and knocked back and you're behind five other cars again and you work and get past them and and that's kind of how my mentality of course i am a racer still and that's my mentality i, I look at all this stuff as okay we've we've spun out racing before we've crashed racing before we fixed cars and we finished racing with cars that were beat and battered, you know, and, and that's the way I'm, I'm going about it. So, and it is a, it's a, it's definitely a journey. Um, and I'm glad that, that you and all that you do and all the people are in this journey with me. And, and I'll, I'll, I try to keep people informed simply because I didn't know, you know, um, a good friend of mine, Pete Orr, passed with, with cancer, you know, years ago. And, and I didn't get close to Pete when he was doing the treatments. Kind of sometimes I wish I would have. But now I understand why he was kept apart from everybody because it, it's hard. It's hard to go see somebody that's doing what you love to do. And, you know, the chances of me getting back in there and doing that again are slim. I'm going to fight to try to do it. But, you know, the things that you're that you get that you're going to have to give up, that, that you may have to give up. Those are the toughest things for everyday psyche. You know, my biggest thing right now is, is staying alive. You know, I mean, that was that was what I sat down and I told all my racing guys. And when I got Bubba, when we got Bubba to drive the car speed week, I said, guys, I ain't concerned with racing right now. I love it. And I want to be part of it if I can be. But right now, I need to be worried about being alive. As you know, this is this is a reality check for me. Racing is not my life. I used to think it was. It's not. Life is my life. And then I'll do racing. <laughs> yeah, you probably need to talk to my wife, honestly, because she'd like to hear that from you to, to impress that upon me as well. I, the whole situation seems like an eye-opening experience. Um and like I said, we, we've been praying for you, um, you know, my, my family and I with my son before we go to bed, you're in our prayers every night. Uh, and we're so happy, you know, listen, you know, my wife uh, sees a lot of my texts that come through on my computer. And, right. and, and when I got that text that you were in remission, I, I mean, literally 30 seconds later, I had a text from my wife, you know, saying, saying, telling me the good news. And so we were just overjoyed, you know, with that good news. And I know a lot of people are feeling that same thing. Uh, and we want to know now, okay, 
what's the next step? What's the process? You know, well, the your... process is I have to go through, like I said, I just went to another chemo on, on this past Tuesday. I do, I do the chemo treatments every 21 days. Um, so I've got three more. The last one will be June the 11th. And then June the 11th, uh, after that, if everything goes like it has so far, um, I should be basically clean. Um, they won't give me, they won't say that I'm cured. They said that takes five years. Said if I do these PET scans, it'll be like once every first time, it'll be like in three months and then six months from that. And then they'll stretch them out. And then if I stay clean, I'll do them like once every six months or once a year, maybe. And, and they, they said, you know, in five years, if you've tested clean for five years, then we'll say you're cured. But oh. till till that time happens, you're not cured. Because like they said, when I got all excited and I said, oh, there's none in me. So I we can quit the treatments and I can, you know, heal up from the chemo. And then I can go get rehooked up and should I be ready to race for the 4th of July race? And they're like, no, no, that ain't happening. You got to go through the whole process. And like they told me, they said, if one cell's left in there and, and I had a, a good friend of mine, his daughter had cancer when she was nine years old. And this has been probably 30 years ago, a little over 30 years ago. And the girl's still, the girl's still alive. She's still a great friend of mine. Her dad passed away with a heart attack. Um, but we had, I had to go and sit in with him and, and hear him and his wife to hear her cancer doctor explain to them because they were so upset that they wouldn't understand anything he said. And then after they calmed down, I could explain to him what they said. And that doctor said at that time, which stuck in my head, he said that he felt as a cancer doctor, he felt every human being alive has one cancer cell in them. He said, because you don't, you don't get cancer from smoking a cigarette. You don't get cancer from drinking too many sodas. You don't get cancer from that. Those things contribute to the health of a cancer. So he said, I feel that everybody's got one cell of cancer in their body. And he said, what we got to figure out is what makes that cancer cell grow. Because all cancers, when they grow, they're one cell. Then they're two cells then they're four cells, then they're eight cells. So they double, every time they grow, they double. So you go from having a, a golf ball to a baseball, a baseball to a softball in growth. That's why cancer is so strong with what it does because it doubles every time it grows. What makes it grow is if you smoke, if you're a smoker and you get lung cancer, your lungs are in terrible shape, your your oxygen levels low. So all those things contribute to helping that cancer grow. My cancer can't definitely be determined from, but I was taking a shot because I have for the last 15 years, I took Embril. It's advertised on TV. Um, the golfer, one of the golfers, takes it and they advertise, you know, can, can result in lymphoma. And I asked the, the doctor point blank. I said, did embryo cause me to get lymphoma? And he said, David, we can't, you know, he said, yes. He said, because it reduces your immune system and your immune system is what fights off cancer. Your immune system is what caused your arthritis, your fingers to quit moving and, and things like that. And he said, but was it one in a thousand or was it one in 10,000 or one in a million? The chance of that causing you to get it. He says, we don't know that. He said, and we don't know that it really caused, but yes, it does bring your immune system down. So if you did have that lymphoma cell that that doctor was talking about, and you're, it got weak, and I got weak at a time, and it doubled, then the party's on for it. It just doubles, doubles, doubles. 
So, and that's what happened to me. That's why it went so quick with me. That's why, why I started out. I, I had the first little problem in late August. And then it was, I wanted to run the governor's cup and the Derby. So I put up with a little bit of pain, which I shouldn't have done. That was being a dumb racer. I'll admit you should always go to the doctor and have stuff checked when you, when you feel your body ain't right, but wanting to race so bad and wanting to be at those two races, I put off my doctor's appointments till after, after the Derby. And as soon as the Derby was over, it was like, Oh dang, shouldn't have done this. Cause this stuff was growing the whole time, you know? So that's kind of how it goes. Yeah, it's an interesting process and what you have to go through physically, mentally, all right. that sort of thing. You know, uh, it, it just, I mean, it, in in uh, a way, it, it's, uh, it, you know, it, it's amazing from the standpoint of, you know, how that happens. But, you know, as I look at this and I listen to you and I hear you talk about family, friends, people you didn't even know you knew that were fans of you, you know, I know, you know, life and family and all that are the most important right now. Have you had time to even reflect on racing as a whole, either how important you were to this racing scene or, you know, how important racing is to you and the people in it and, and all that sort of stuff. Right. You know, that's, that's, that's always been me. You know, I love racing. I love winning races. I, I probably want, well, without a doubt since trickle's gone and there's probably very few people short track racers in the country that's won more races than i have i don't blow smoke on that that didn't that didn't what i started out doing it and geez i've been doing it for 45 years so i should have won a lot of races you know but i've always loved racing i always support racing i always try to bring racers up young racers i'll help them any way i can because of my love of the sport and I do it for the love of the sport. I don't do it because I want people to know me and I don't do it for the rich and the famous. Of course, if you're a short track racer and you're doing it for rich, that's not a very smart thing to do. But <laughs> Not at all. But even even though us racers have never been proven to be very smart about that, that end of it for sure. But, you know, but I've always promoted racing because I love racing. I still love racing. I, I still want to be involved in racing. Uh, do I want to race you? I want to get back and race you. Am I too old? Probably yeah, I am. But, you know, my goal this year is to be back at the Snowball Derby. You know, that's it's it's a long term goal. And my guys are going, well, like, what about this? I said, well, you know, the way I see it, if I get back to the Snowball Derby, I'm going to be doing good. You know, from what I've been through and, you know, I, there's there's been times that I couldn't even get a shower for myself. I'm so weak. I lost 70 pounds. You know, I wasn't a, I wasn't a skinny guy to start with, but I'm a skinny guy now. You know, I got, I was wearing 36 on the verge of 38 pants and 32s. If I don't pull the belt up real tight, it'll fall off my butt now. You know, um, <laughs> <laughs> I have to be careful when I walk. I got the pants on the ground syndrome, but you know, and, and, and little things like that, that the normal things in life, opening a bottle, uh, opening a thing of shampoo or uh, a flip top or something, or even like when I finally got back in my truck to come to drive to the race car shop one day and I couldn't with one with my right hand, I couldn't turn the key on. I had to reach over with both hands and I'm like, Oh my gosh, if my wife sees me do this, she's not going to let me go. You know, it took both hands to turn the ignition key on. That's how weak I was, you know, and now I'm proud because I can turn the key on with one hand. So you know, I am in therapy and making progress. <laughs> we can't wait to honestly uh, spread the news uh, to everybody, honestly, David, because uh, this is just, you know, unfortunately with Speed 51, there is so much going on. You mentioned like the oh, engine, gosh, engine yes. thing. There's there's drivers fighting all the time. But when you get the opportunity to, to tell good news like this after some tough news, uh, it, it really makes us say, you know what? That's what this job is all about, and and it's awesome to be able to do this. And the racing community is wonderful, you know. I like 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 we, I've always said, you know, the like the the Kyle Busch haters, and there's Kyle Busch lovers, you know, and and just Dale Earnhardt's, and that's what makes racing though. That's what what has got it to the point it's at, you know. And that's what we need 
kind of back in racing. You need fans that that have good guys and bad guys. Now the little kids, they aren't around long enough to set a precedent for themselves. Now they, you know, now the, the people don't like so-and-so because he's driving Kyle Busch's car and I don't like Kyle Busch. You know, it's not that they don't like that particular little old driver or they like him really good. It's just, you know, and that's, that's kind of part of, in my opinion, what hurts racing. That's what helps it on the local levels because you got those weekly warriors that are coming out with the bombers and the strictly stocks that are fender fighting. And, you know, people get more excited watching those nowadays simply because that guy's going to be back next week. You know, you don't, you don't see the super late models. They may only go to a, a racetrack once or twice a year, you know, just like Pensacola. You know, you go up there four times and then you go to the Derby uh, for the super late models. So fans don't really get that close personal with a weekly racer like they used to get. And I think that hurts part of racing because that guy, eh, I don't, there's nobody, he's not going to be there, so I'm not going to be there. You know, if Bubba's not going, Bubba puts on, you know, puts it out there that he's not going to be at the racetrack. If you're a Bubba Pollard fan, you don't go to the races. Well, we can't afford to lose those fans. You know, they need to pick a new guy. You know, Bubba ain't going to be there. Pick somebody else or pick somebody you don't like to root for them to get in a wreck. You know, go to the races. <laughs> Do you think that's the difference, David? I know we've gotten into a philosophical discussion now, but you know yeah. we, we talk yeah. about it all the time. You know, you know, back in the day, there there was you. You know, there was Gary Ballou, there was Mike Eddy, Dick Trickle, Mike Miller, Butch Miller, uh, Bob Seneca. I mean, the list goes on and on. On and on, yeah. You know, but but now, you know, there used to be posters, you know, put up about you know, who's coming to the racetrack. Do you think that's the biggest difference in what we're seeing today, especially with the new fan and they're having a hard time, you know, uh, knowing what is on the racetrack? Yeah, I do. I really, I think that's a big part of it. And I think the, like, just like I said, I think that's a big part of it. And I think that's what hurts that fan instead of him following a particular driver and saying, Hey, he's going to be there this weekend they don't have that driver to follow, you know? It, yeah. You know, there's going to be, you know, the snowball derby is going to fill up because it's the snowball derby, but just like the governor's cup, for example, they struggle over there because they don't have those big names that, you know, is going to be there. You know, used to, there was big names that, that ran at St. Pete and Auburndale and, Palm Beach or the High Leah racetrack and and Governor's Cup, three or four of those guys, the, the name guys from those tracks would come to the Governor's Cup, come to New Smyrna or come to Tampa when the Governor's Cup was in the at, at the old fairground at the old racetrack in downtown Tampa. But those people came, those fans came with them. They came to see those. Those guys are gone now. There's there's very few local track heroes because they just don't do enough of that weekly racing to get that fan built up. So that fan's not going to come from Michigan to see a potpourri of drivers that he don't know who's there. I'll just go to the beach and we'll stay at the beach and do that. You know, and I really think that hurts that hurts the fan base which in turn hurts, turns around and hurts everything else that's going on with racing, you know, because if they don't have fans, they're not making money and they're not making money, they're not paying money. So they don't get the cars. You know, it's a, it's a snowball effect. And I appreciate all you do for, for me and for racing. Cool. You've been nothing but great from the start. I cannot I wait. I appreciate to, that. I can't wait to get to the snowball derby and we can sit down on that wall on tech day and talk racing once again. All right. Sounds like a plan to me. You got it, buddy. Thank you so much. Okay, man. Thank All you, right. Bob. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Goodbye. Well, certainly a touching story from David Rogers, and uh, great to hear from him. Great to hear such great news. And a lot of you guys weighing in on our Facebook page, Brenda, saying God is awesome. We've watched you race for years. Your fans love you. Uh, talking to David. Jimmy Live even weighing in saying uh, this is awesome, uplifting story. 
uh, keep up, keep digging, David. You got a new fan uh, in Jimmy Live, so that's good to hear. Kathy, uh, Kathy Roberti, also weighing in along with Brian Glaze. So, um, great story coming out of short track racing, and uh, coming up on the other side of the break, we have much more to talk about. So, stay tuned in here on the Morning Bull Ring. It's Bristol, baby. The Short Track U.S. Nationals return to Bristol Motor Speedway. May 31st and June 1st. For tickets, visit bristolmotorspeedway.com forward slash tickets. P51's Video Network, where the battles are legendary. Get the full picture on short track racing. We'll take you behind the scenes. Um, he's just a meathead. He's always the same way. Your track, your driver, your sport, your passion. Dirt, late models, modifies, and more. Race highlights, recaps, interviews, and thousands of on-demand videos. Speed 51 Network. Short Track Racers home for the best video coverage. Hey race fans, download the new Speed51.com app today. Breaking news, feature stories, the unfiltered podcast, live race coverage, schedules, and more right at your fingertips. Download it today on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Eight fifty-two in the morning here on the morning bull ring, and uh, it's time to talk more short track racing here at Speed51.com. I'm Casey LaJoy. Bob's having a little fun with uh, charging Charlie over here. How old are you, Bob? I am five. <laughs> yeah, apparently. My, my wife and my mother tell me I act like I'm five years old, so I might as well be five. That's years right. Old, right. I mean, you're never too old to play with some. Little toy cars. You know what's really cool, actually, being a dad five times over is you know you get you know the boys that 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 want to play with the the matchbox cars as we used to like to call a mark, uh, but the diecast cars, the little one sixty fours, and you got they got their dirt late models, they got their tour type modifieds, you know they, they got all sorts of stuff there, and I actually get to play with them, and then after a while, my wife Angie she says, uh, isn't isn't it, aren't the kids supposed to be playing with that? <laughs> Like, well, now I'm having a race. Nowadays, like die casts like that, they're so realistic. Everything moves and it's got like springs in it and all sorts yeah, of stuff. I don't play with, well, my kids don't yeah. play with those. But do you remember back ones. in the day when they first came out with the first set of modified Matchbox? It was actually Matchbox was the brand name. And there was only four cars in the series. And I think every every kid that was a race fan all up and down the East Coast had a, had a set of those. I still have them somewhere. You know, the one thing that... Um, Zach Evans didn't talk about in the news just yet. Some Way to uh, go, Zach. big news breaking actually over the weekend about somebody we're going to see at Virginia Motor Speedway this coming weekend, and that is Timmy McCready, T Mac, actually teaming up with Kevin Rumley and that uh, just uh, just legendary six car for the Rumley family. They are going to the King of the Commonwealth at Virginia Motor Speedway this weekend. So that's going to be a lot of fun to see how Rumley and T-Mac do up against some of the best in the business when we get to the King of the Commonwealth, that ultimate super late model show. Fast Track is also going to be on hand. So uh, Virginia Motor Speedway, uh, they kick off a very special season, and we are going to go to the PFC Performance Hotline right now. First time caller, David C., thank you so much for joining us on the Morning Bull Ring. Uh, you're welcome, my friend. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing fam- fantabulous. Uh, come off a, a, a great event with the All-Star Circuit of Champions Sprint Car Series and UMP Modifieds uh, the Thursday before the Richmond Raceway event, and... Uh, uh, packed house so um uh, we're super excited uh, for me as the marketing guy it's a little more difficult um because i'm doing back-to-back specials and it's crazy <laughs> it is a little bit crazy i didn't get a chance to see the all-star highlights just yet uh from speed shift tv but I, I did get a chance to see that fantastic finish of the ump modified race i mean what oh, yeah. a finish that was <laughs> 
That was probably I, I I will probably go out on a limb and say that's probably the best modified race we've had here. Yeah, that was great. David Stremme with the big win, former NASCAR star, uh, getting it done at Virginia Motor Speedway. And, hey, man, this is a huge year for you guys and Virginia Motor Speedway. How much are you looking forward to this big year? Uh, you know, 50th anniversary. Uh, that's why we kind of started off uh, with this uh, this two special events at the beginning of the year. Uh, it, it really is special because it, it's also the 20th season uh, under the direction and ownership of uh, Bill Sawyer um, and uh, his nephew, uh, Clark Sawyer, uh, who is our general manager. And, uh, you know, we have worked tirelessly, and, and by the way, this is my 20th season here. <laughs> so Been a long um, time. Uh, we've worked tirelessly trying to elevate the – uh, the position of Virginia Motor Speedway uh, amongst the dirt and asphalt um, uh, short track ranks. And I, I, I think we've done it. We, you know, um, we have one of the finest facilities anywhere, uh, uh, one of the safest facilities anywhere. And, uh, and I'll put up our racing service and the, and the kind of races we have uh, here with, uh, with anybody. So, uh, you know, we're super excited. Got a great year. As you well know, Bob, because we're going to uh, be uh, uh, filming it for uh, MAV TV. You guys are going to be out here, Speed 51, uh, for the um, Fast Track World Championship, where uh, we will we will make history. Uh, it is going to be the uh, you know it'll end our end our 50th anniversary season, but uh, uh, here at the short track. Um, uh, you know, fifty thousand dollars to win for a fast track pro late model crate late model uh, event, and dang it, the th- the darn thing pays two thousand and fifty just to start. So uh, it's going to be an exciting year. We got two twenty thousand dollar to win uh, super late model shows. Uh, the King of the Common with obviously this Saturday, uh, and uh, the USA one hundred on uh, June fifteenth. Uh, we also have two of the biggest mud bogs. Uh, on the east coast and uh so we're excited about those as well but it's going to be a an interesting year it's going to be a fun year uh, and you don't get but 150 so we got to do it right absolutely we're looking forward to coming up to virginia motor speedway with speed 51 and uh looking forward to that fast track world championship in mid-september fifty thousand dollars on the line for the winner of that pro late model race and uh gonna be a lot of cars there let me tell you we were expecting over oh, by the way i gotta thank you uh Why? you used a younger photo of me that's <laughs> so nice of you <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me, by the way. <laughs> that was that was Tom Ryan, and he gets a lot of like, what are you doing, Tom? So I'm sure he's very happy that you just gave him that kudos right there. <laughs> I, I love it, man. I love it. <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, uh, by the way, oh, I want to let the fans out there know we're going to have a uh, – obviously, uh, we're going to have uh, you guys, uh, Speed 51, out for the King of the Commonwealth. Uh, um, want to have a uh, special announcement probably a little bit later in the week. Uh, got some details to work out for it, but uh, um, excited to have you guys come out and, um, uh, you know, uh, show us what you can do. Hey, what do you think this weekend's going to be like? Uh, King of the Commonwealth, um, Ultimate Super Late Models. You got the fast track cars there as well. Uh, for a dirt late model fa- fan, Virginia Motor Speedway is the place to be this weekend. It, it is. And I'll, I'll tell you, uh, there, there hasn't been a bad King of the Commonwealth yet. Uh, as far as the racing has gone. Uh, last year, uh, it looked like Jonathan Davenport was going to kind of run away with everything, and it came down to a uh, a last lap uh, and uh, a, da- a dash by Scott Bloomquist on the outside uh, in turn three. He got side-by-side side with him but washed up the track a little bit, allowing to uh, Jonathan uh, for Jonathan to go – to get the twenty thousand dollar win. Um, by the way, uh, you were talking about the Rumleys. That number six car has a pretty damn good track record here. I, I would say uh, probably eighty percent win rate here. <laughs> wow! Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. <laughs> something Kevin Rumley. He loves this track. Um, I was told, uh, you know, back when he was uh, developing the the Longhorn chassis back then. 
that, um, you know, I, and he won the first time out in, in that chassis here. And he said, man, I, we, we, we built that thing for this place. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're a pretty unique track. It's more of a egg shape like Darlington, narrow one and two, uh, sweeping three and four. So it's, you know, it can be a daunting task for some of these teams to, um, uh, get a setup that works on both, both ends. So, uh, uh, it's going to be a phenomenal show. I, I'm, I'm really excited to see uh, how Tim McCready does in that number six. Uh, that's that, that's a pretty cool pairing, and and um, uh, and we're excited to have Tim McCready back. He he was here last year, so uh, looking forward to uh, having him here. Hopefully, you know, cross our fingers. You know, we we'll have a, a few more of the bigger guys uh, out of the national tours, but both of them are off, uh, this weekend. So, uh, hopefully, um, we'll see a few of those guys and, uh, for, come out here and run for $20,000 to win. By the way, for the fast track pro late models, it, it, as Stan Lester put it on uh, Facebook the other day, uh, paid practice for the $50,000 to win world championship. Paid practice. That's not a bad deal at all. Well, Dave, talk to everybody about what your uh, weekend schedule is going to look like. When does everything open up? When does everything get kind of started over there at uh, Virginia Motor Speedway? The um, the uh, uh, g- spectator gates will open at uh, four o'clock. Um, uh, On track uh, action is going to um, uh, begin at uh, at six thirty with hot laps qualifying will follow. Then ra- you know then the racing, but. Uh, uh, typically we go, uh, ultimate super late models first and fast track, uh, as far as features, uh, go. So, um, we always try to give the, um, I don't want to say the top division cause we, we love the fast track pro late models, but we always try to give those guys the best track available to run on. Uh, so we're, uh, we're excited about this weekend. By the way, we have, pl- we have a lot of free free i said free dry camping spots available um if you like to get out in the uh, our camper or rv um or motorhome uh bring it on out uh we have plenty of spaces to uh to uh, put you and we don't charge a dime for it that's pretty cool i didn't know that so how about that virginia motor speeding yeah Speedway. oh by the way pit yeah. passes are forty dollars uh, and they do get you a, a seat in the grandstand so. that's cool <laughs> but hey i love that free camping I might be coming up for the uh, the Fast Track World Championship, bringing my camper up there now that I know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Now. <laughs> You're part of the crew now. Uh, by the way, adult admission for this is only 30 bucks. That's cool. Um, seniors, 16 older, military, 25. Students, 13 to 17 or 15. And children, 12 and under, are free. So we try to keep the prices down. We have some of the best concessions in the business at fam- uh, family-friendly pricing. You know, uh, Bill Sawyer and his family have really um, uh, worked really hard uh, at, you know, kind of bringing that NASCAR uh, mentality that they had at Richmond Raceway down to the short track level. And that's, uh, uh, you know, we we hope that uh, everybody will come out and witness it. I mean, I'm looking at a picture uh, right now from, from last year. It's four wide over in turn two. So... <laughs> Uh, it's it's going to be one hell of a race, guys. I'm looking forward to it for sure. The King of the Commonwealth this weekend, Dave. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing all of you. Uh, tell the Sawyer family that, I, that I'm looking forward to it too because, man, they've been so instrumental in motorsports of all kinds in Virginia. Oh, and by the way, I was listening earlier about y'all's discussion. Uh, I know it was an asphalt track and, and how things are promoted nowadays. That's That's one of the things that we talk about um continuously here you know you have to adapt um to the times but you can't forget about the way you used to do it uh we still do a lot of uh guerrilla marketing as i call it going out and putting flyers up uh around town um uh, you, you know speaking with uh, the local businesses in the local area uh you, you just can't forget about the personal touch uh in this industry and um uh, you know we've got to, you know we work real hard here in the state of Virginia. We have a thing called Racing Virginia, uh, where all the tracks kind of work together to promote each other. Uh, I know you're very familiar with Langley Speedway. 
Um, I have such a, we have such a crazy relationship with them. They promote our events, we promote their events, and we're only an hour and a half away, and we race on the same night. Um, but for all of us to survive, uh, you have to start making some partnership like we did with Richmond Raceway for the NASCAR event. We put a three-day ticket package together for that Thursday night uh, sprint car race uh, with Tony Stewart. Uh, it, that worked extremely well. So, so we got to remember what's, you know, got to remember how, where you came from, and but you also need to be able to adapt and do things that maybe you don't think you should do because it's a very, uh, uh, you know, today's generation lives on a phone, lives on a, uh, you know, uh, on a computer, and that's the way they like to consume stuff sometimes. Uh, it's funny, you know, we'll do pay-per-views here and you see people watching it in the grandstands. I'm like, okay, whatever. (laughs) But I think they do it, you know, for replays and stuff. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's a different game. I just hope everybody out there that watches your show understands that if you don't support your weekly racetrack and it doesn't matter whether it's asphalt, dirt, drag racing, uh, uh, karting, it doesn't matter. If you don't support it, um, we're going to have a hard time keeping this sport alive. Uh, we've got to, you know, cause we've got to breed some new, some new fans. Our old, our fans are getting older. They are getting older. We're getting older for sure. You know, the, the young, upstarts. Oh, I know I am. <laughs> the young upstarts <laughs> coming through. I've been here 20 years. So, I mean, but it's, uh, we're super excited guys. You got a great show there. I check in all the time. Um, and uh, really appreciate you having us on. Really appreciate you coming out here and being a part of the King of the Commonwealth. It's going to be a lot of fun this weekend. Dave, we'll see you up there, Virginia Motor Speedway. King of the Commonwealth this weekend. Ultimate Super Late Models, $20,000 on the line. Uh, a great starting purse as yeah. well. And then the Fast Track Pro Late Models will be there as well. You love dirt late model racing. You need to be at the Virginia Motor Speedway this weekend. Yeah, I was surprised by the starting pay. You don't see that very <laughs> no. much. That's pretty, it's pretty darn good just to start. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they do things right at the Virginia Motor Speedway. Uh, the Sawyer family, Dave, uh, they do a good job. Obviously, the Sawyer family has been involved with racing in that region for a very long time, uh, back to, to Richmond and so forth. So they know a thing or two, a uh, little old school, a little new school. That's what Virginia Motor Speedway is all about. So we got some more news coming up this morning as well. Some races to look forward to as well. And for that, we go back to Zach Evans. So first, we'll we'll look back and kind of recap, especially for those of us who are tuning in. Easy for me to say. (laughs) Um, Maybe weren't here for the first hour. Some of the news we covered at the start of the show. It is early when we start the show. It is early. It is early. But Michael Self, winner ARCA at Salem. Bob was there for that. We talked a little bit about that earlier today as well. And that race, unfortunately, cut short. Made it just past halfway. 101. official race. Right on the button on that 200-lap deal. Ran three laps under caution to get there. Yeah, it's all right. (laughs) Who's counting? (laughs) The Xfinity Uh, race. Other than the officials. Yeah, Yeah. well, (laughs) we needed to get there. The Xfinity race finished, like, in the rain. I thought they were going to put rain tires on. Yeah. (laughs) That was crazy. Um. And then uh, you know, some other winners from the weekend. You had Dale McDowell winning with the Spring National Series. Um, you know, Matt Shepard picking up the win with the Super Dirt Cars. <laughs> Matt Shepard, Super Matt. Matt. Shepard. That's right. Mr. Freeze picking up a win at, at, in the, at the Orange County Fair Speedway in the Big Block Modifieds. Um, just a few of the winners from this weekend. Logan Shuhart with the World of Outlaw Sprint Cars. Charlotte Davenport, World of Outlaw Late Models. Um, but you know, enough with what we saw this past weekend. Let's talk a little bit about what's coming up this weekend because hopefully, hopefully the weather will be a little more cooperative. We've especially on the Speed 51 side got some big races coming up this weekend. Uh, obviously, we just finished talking to Dave C. We will be at Virginia Motor Speedway for that deal, the King of the Commonwealth Fast Track and Ultimate Ultimate paying twenty thousand win Fast Track three thousand win. That's got to be two big races, and you'll be able to catch that live. On Speed 51. And Easter Bunny 150. We announced uh, that that will be a pay-per-view on Speed 51. Pro All-Star Series at Hickory Motor Speedway this weekend. That's where I'll be this weekend. So looking forward to that one down at Hickory. 
It's going to be a lot of fun. Easter Bunny 150, the tradition continues. Tom Mayberry and his staff do a great job uh, at uh, getting that event, and it just continues to grow each and every year. Of course, the Super Late Models, the headlining act. Our buddy Alan Dietz will be there. Alan. I love listening to him. He does a great job on the mic. Other support divisions as well. And there's just something about going to Hickory Motor Speedway that's just a lot of fun. Um, You know, the the place is a little bit old, a little bit tattered uh, to some degree right now. It's got character. It's got character for sure. Um, But the Super Late Models put on a great show. And somebody that knows a thing or two about winning there is on the PFC Performance Hotline. First time caller on the morning bullring. And I want to know, Preston Peltier, where are you calling from this morning? Because you're all over the map. I'm sorry, I can't hardly hear you. Where, where are you calling from this morning, Preston? You're getting in your truck. Uh, beautiful, sunny Colorado this morning. Okay, so when are you coming out to run this race? Uh, I'll be leaving Wednesday afternoon, and that'll give me a little time to love on the old 33 machine for a little bit, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good result this weekend. So back behind the wheel of the number 33 this weekend. And, of course, you've been on and off with them the past couple of years and so forth. You've had a lot of success at the Easter Bunny 150 at Hickory Motor Speedway, a five-time winner of that event, and several other good finishes to boot on top of that. Uh, Why are you so good at Hickory? Are you there, Preston? Yeah, man, I can. I really can just barely hear you. Sorry about that, buddy. We'll we'll try to talk a little bit louder. Uh, something might be going on with the phone connection okay. or whatever. But I want to know why are you so good at Hickory Motor Speedway? Man, you know, uh, probably because uh, you, you know when I cut my teeth there, I, I did it against guys like Ben Rowe and Mike Rowe and Freddie Query, and uh, you know. In my younger days, when, you know, most of those races are 125 to 150 laps, I, if, if it was a 50 lap race, I, I would murder everybody. But uh, unfortunately, they weren't. And um, it took me a little while, but those guys taught me a lesson and, um, you know, tire management. So I, I think I think that's it. You know, it just suits my driving style. It's really, really rough. And uh it's got multiple grooves so you can move around and find some grip, you know, it, from, from day to day, the place changes, you know, there's been times we've gone there and, and, uh, you know, I'll be on the bottom and run the top and go, Oh, there's, there's some nice grip there. And I'll wait till the opportune time to, to use it. And, uh, you know, just, just to not show my hand. Um, so it's, it's, it's just kind of a unique place that, that just kind of suits me. Well, that's for sure. And you've had, tons of success there as well and your recent success in that 33 machine i believe the last time you ran it was southern national correct me if i'm wrong but i think the last time you're on track was southern national almost took that win from bubba pollard uh this is uh you've been running that car now you have the rowdy manufacturing car as well how do you weigh on which car you're gonna go to uh when you come to running like places like hickory and stuff like that well um the Originally, the plan was to take the Rowdy car to Nashville this weekend and then drive straight out and then, you know, run Newton's car. The, the thing is, it's like, you know, we kind of, between Generator Source and Newton Concrete, we kind of have a good relationship where, you know, we kind of run the big shows and, and the stuff on the West Coast with the Generator Source racing and then, you know, most of the East Coast stuff with uh, uh, Newton Concrete and, and uh you know, we've had a lot of success with both teams and, and really as far as the cars go, man, I, you know, right now I'm in the best equipment that I've ever been in my life. And, um, that, yeah, I got to thank both Roger Newton and Eddie and Ed Betcherini because, uh, um, you know, this is, this, this is something that you can only, you know, dream about in a lifetime and, and here I get to do it. So it's, it's pretty cool. I, I really appreciate those guys a lot. Hey, I got a really important question here. Casey, right. Casey loves when I say that. Yeah, because they're never important. Well, no, they are <laughs> in this circumstance. Okay, obviously, uh, you and Ashley ha- have a beautiful little one. But did I see somewhere that another one is on the way? Yeah, we're expecting number two in September this year. 
That's pretty cool. So you're going to have another one with you at the Snowball Derby later on this year. How's it going to be? Yes. You know, after being a, a dad of one, do you think uh, number two, you're ready for that because now you're a seasoned veteran? Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, I, I got to say, man, you know, being a, a father, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, she does all know, the hard I, I was, work, you know, though. Go ahead. She does all the hard work, though. Uh, I, I don't know about that. Oh. I think we, you know, she, she definitely works hard. You know, um, man, having a kid is definitely a full time job. And and that's another thing I'm thankful for. You know, these guys give me the opportunity where um, when I'm on the road, you know, most of the time my family can come with me. Uh, so that's kind of nice. And, and, and so what I was going to say is, is being a father was is uh, definitely I, I enjoy it a lot. And, and I think I enjoy it more so because I'm a little bit older, you know, I don't think that I would have enjoyed it as much. I, I was a little bit too selfish, um, you know, in my younger years to, to really have kids. So this is just, it's worked out for the best. I think. That's pretty cool. It's always awesome to see uh, all of you at the racetrack together. I remember seeing you guys down at the snowball derby and Ashley is just such a, a great spirit. I mean, she's always like just pumped up and excited and so forth and, and your biggest fan. Um, so, you know, I want to know where else are we going to see you this year with your family, with the teams that you're running in addition to the Easter bunny One Fifty. What's the schedule look like for Preston this year? So we were actually right when you called, we were just looking over um, the race schedule that she put together. Uh, it looks like we're going to go and run the, uh, uh, the money in the bank. We'll be at that one. Uh, we, we'll probably track up to Washington at the end of May and run the Galloway. It's just kind of a, a, a precursor, a test for the, the summer showdown. And, um, uh, obviously the Easter bunny we'll, we'll be at some more races back East. There's a the throwback. I think we're going to go run that. Um, the super select at Lucas oil raceway. Do what now? You're, you're going to get an invite. I'm sure to the super select at Lucas oil raceway, September 7th. Yeah. That's going to be a, a tough one probably oh. because that's when somewhere in that. Time oh, that's right. Do, so that's right. Um, yeah, that might be a tough sell. Oh, just, Last time. Just I'm tell sorry, Ashley was, there's some was great doctors. And was on BB Watch the whole time, so I don't know if <laughs> she would go for two in a row like that. Hey, listen, just tell Ashley there are some great doctors around Indianapolis. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. She'll, she'll probably be very receptive to that. You know, yeah. <laughs> hey, she's a racer. I, I, I know I, she might be receptive to that. Just tell her Bob Dillner wants you there. So that, that hopefully that'll help a little bit. But uh, what yeah. else? What about in the fall? You know, what are we looking at in the fall? I know Snowball Derby's got to be on there. Yeah, the Derby for sure. Um, I'm actually pretty excited about, you know, not having to bring a pit crew this year. Um, so we, we're definitely looking forward to that. And we'll, we'll be in the rowdy car for that deal. And, uh, Man, you know that rowdy car is just just the next level for for our program. You know, we have some nice cars, and and I've always from day one, I've never driven anything but a Hamke until we went to Kern this year, and um, you know, uh, we still have those Hamkes. So they're they're still great cars. Actually, at, you know, as a matter of fact, the the car we took to Irwindale and won with is our Hamke car from the Derby, and. Uh, so, but, but the rowdy stuff is, it, it, I, I can't say it's, it's better, but the, the quality is, is way nicer. Like, you know, this is, this is like, um, you know, cup car technology in this stuff and, and, and everything is TIG welded and it's beautiful. The work is absolutely beautiful. So, um, it's been nice to work on that stuff. You know, we were. We were getting, you know, it was pushed off in the corner after Kern and, you know, we worked on these other cars and as, as Nashville approached, we dug it back out of the corner and started working on it. And we're like, you know, as we're working on it, man, this thing's really nice. So uh, anybody out there looking to get a new car, uh, you definitely need to go talk to the boys at Rowdy because they do a great job. 
Well, Preston, we appreciate you coming on the show for sure. That rounding manufacturing chassis uh, with Cody Glick, Kyle Bush, Justin Ortel, uh, they all love super late model racing. And, and, you know, I know you, the fabricator that you are, used to work for Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, I'm sure, uh, as I can hear from your voice, you appreciate the craftsmanship from the rounding manufacturing car. But, uh, Preston, good luck at the Easter Bunny 150. And uh, remember, everybody can watch it live on speed51.com this weekend. All right. Thanks, guys. It was a pleasure talking to you. You got it, Preston Peltier. You talk about a new school, old school racer. Preston's it. I mean, he is so involved with those race cars, and uh, he's got that old school, you know, feel, even though, you know, you know, he began his career right around when Speed 51 began. And I know we're like, you know, 18 years old or whatever it is now with Speed 51, which is pretty long time yep. for, for a racing website. Uh, so we're, we're proud to have seen Preston Peltier every step of the way. Yeah, it's definitely awesome uh, to see him at a racetrack. Anytime he goes, you know, he's going to be always a uh, contender. And, um, man, it's been cool to see uh, just really no matter where he goes, you know, qualifying on the, for the dirt on the pole for the Derby, what, two, two years ago? Was it two? Two years ago. Yeah. Won uh, the Summer Showdown a couple of times yep. as well, and Evergreen out there in Washington. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. We'll have a lot of great coverage with Speed 51 out there, and five-time Easter Bunny 150 winner. He's also a former past national Super Late Model champion. I mean, highly decorated. Yes, absolutely. Uh, he's one of those that we're going to be talking about in the Hall of Fame category. Yes, Preston, I actually said that about you. Coming up, we're going to go out west one more time here on the Morning Bull Ring. By the way, Brandon, I'm sorry. You booked too many guests. I don't think we're getting back to you. We're going to have short track discussion in terms of the draft next week on the Morning Bull Ring. It's Bristol, baby. The short track U.S. Nationals return to Bristol Motor Speedway. May 31st and June 1st. For tickets, visit bristolmotorspeedway.com forward slash tickets. Speed 51's video network, where the battles are legendary. Get the full picture on short track racing. We'll take you behind the scenes. Um, he's just a meathead. He's always the same way. Your track, your driver, your sport, your passion. Dirt. Modifies and more. Race highlights, recaps, interviews, and thousands of on demand videos. Speed 51 Network, short track racers home for the best video coverage. Hey, race fans, download the new speed51.com app today. Breaking news, feature stories, the unfiltered podcast live race coverage, schedules, and more right at your fingertips. Download it today on iTunes and the Google Play Store. A lot of racing coming up this weekend. Easter Bunny 150, Hickory Motor Speedway, live pay-per-view broadcast on Speed 51. Virginia Motor Speedway with the King of the Commonwealth, Ultimate Super Late Models, as well as the Fast Track Racing Series as well. Uh, so many other racing uh, things going on this weekend. I think you have Carolina Clash at Carolina Speedway. Um, you have the Toledo Race uh, for the CRA boys up there for the CRA Super Series. That's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have coverage from all of that on Speed51.com. Uh, Zach Evans, I was kind of looking at him going, what, what else am I missing here? Because I know we have people all over the map this weekend. I, I know the Dirt Kings Tour is up in Wisconsin. They kick off their season. Um, I believe the Icebreaker at the Dells Raceway Park uh, has been rescheduled for this weekend. This past weekend just sucked, honestly, because Mother Nature just thwarted the efforts of a lot of promoters around America. Yeah, absolutely. Fairgrounds, I think, kicks off their regular season this week, uh, this yeah, coming weekend models. with Pro Late Models also. Yeah, 100 lap race there as well. That was supposed to have taken place as part of the All American 400 weekend. Um, that race was canceled completely after two tries, not three strikes, you're out. Two. The schedule is just way too cluttered, honestly, uh, to be able to get that race in. 
Uh, the one place we did see racing was out west this past week, the SRL Spears Southwest Tour Series in action at Roseville in California, All-American Speedway. And I saw some of the highlights there. It was awfully interesting. Let's go to the PFC Performance Hotline right now and speak to a Team PFC driver, Jeremy Das. Das, did we wake you up this morning or were you actually up this morning? I was up this morning. <laughs> That's good. You have your coffee, you're ready to go. You sound a little yep. bit more awake than you yep. did last time. Yeah, I'm doing a little bit better than last time. <laughs> I think we may be later in the show than the last time we called him. I'm not sure. Yeah, right about the same time. He, he was actually <laughs> I think it's about the same. Yeah, he was in bed last time. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> sometimes you just got to get your beauty sleep. Man. Yeah, well, he, yeah. he, he needs it, right? You need it, right, Jeremy? <laughs> I do love sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, so paint the picture for us. It's six twenty-five in the morning out there. Are, are are you still in your pajamas? Are you eating your cereal? Are you having a cup of coffee? What are you doing? I'm all dressed up after this call. I'll probably just be getting ready to go work on race cars. It's not a bad place to go. Yeah, well, not not a bad no, place, especially since this past weekend. You might not have much work to do, at least on your race car, because it looked pretty sporty there this past weekend at Roseville. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, there's still a little bit of work to do. There's three cars we maintain, and uh, mine still had a little bit of body damage. But, uh, you know, we'll get it done. We'll get our own maintenance up and ready for the next one. Racing against Derek Thorne there at the end, uh, you guys have gone toe-to-toe so many times. I mean, just talk about racing with him. Got to be one of the fiercest competitors out there on the West Coast. Yeah, it was, I thought it was a great race. Uh, he definitely made us work for that one. Uh, but I, I think that's short track racing for you. We did couple bump and runs and i know you guys only seen like the last six laps but there's times before that we ran 15 laps side by side so fans definitely got a good show and i'm just glad we were able to prevail and come out on top you know taking a look at that race you know it was interesting you know i couldn't quite tell by some of the video that i saw online i think stephen blakesley actually posted it i couldn't tell did you nudge him to get the lead or, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got into him a little bit. I saw my opportunity, and you know, it was with six to go, and I, I, there was plenty of opportunity to get back to me, and he tried it. Is we were able to hold him off. You know, it, it seems like honestly to me, and and I'll say this, I think rivalries are good in racing. We need yep. to attract fans, and sometimes rivalries do that. Do you and Derek Thorne have a little bit of a rivalry going on right now? Uh, I, I feel like we have for a while, you know, it's, it's one of those things. It's just, it seems like we always fly, end up racing each other on the track. We always find each other, but uh, you know, I think it makes us both better. He makes me work harder and I make him work harder. Do you like him? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'd say I like him. I mean, sometimes he runs me. I, I feel the wrong way, but you know, I, I don't have any complaints after this weekend, you know, uh, he ran me the way I ran him and I, I couldn't complain. I was looking at Casey LaJoy, and I figured he had a question. I got plenty of questions for you, dude. I, I was watching the highlights. You were. You were, <laughs> we were. We were both looking at the highlights there because that was a fantastic yeah. finish right to the end. Uh, Thorne tried to get up underneath you, muscled you a little bit, that sort of thing. And, you know, yeah. what about the racing on the uh, Spears SRL Southwest Tour? Uh, I mean, you guys look like, it, you know, it's competitive racing. It's getting better each and every year, especially going over to more from a perimeter car over to the straight rail car how do you see the the evolution you're you're a champion now how do you see the evolution of srl i think it's just getting better and i think that's showing you know uh man our worst car count is 25 at that this last weekend and that's pretty dang good for racing now and you know the field's just so tough i mean i qualified seventh and i was i think less than a tenth or right at a tenth off and i think three tenths covered the whole field so that's that's pretty darn good well, you've been winning in a super late model, winning in a mini outlaw, but we have this big race that we like to call the Speed 51 Open here on the East Coast with mini outlaws. Are we going to see you coming out, <laughs> coming out here in the East for some mini outlaw action or what? Uh, we'll see if my schedule allows me. I, re- I really, really want to, but, uh, you know, it, it just depends on if it conflicts with uh, any of this stuff out here with the big cars. Here, here's the deal. If you come out to the Speed 51 Open – Jeremy, just because of our association from the late model side of things, uh, uh-huh. Speed 51, you put a sticker on the car, we're, we're going to give you two tires. All right. That's a good deal. All so, right. So you got to see if we can make it happen. Absolutely. I, I, how do you like those outlaw carts? 
I love them. You know, it keeps me behind the wheel during the winter. Uh, I didn't really get one until probably midway through the season, but you know, it's, it's, if you want to be good, you got to be behind the wheel all the time. I think that's why Colin Larson, Christopher Miller, those guys are so good because they're racing all the time. And I think that's what you need to do. See a picture of you on your Twitter page uh, with your outlaw cart. So we're going to keep on nudging you to come out to the Speed 51 Open, May 22nd, Millbridge Speedway, during NASCAR week here in the Charlotte area, just 20 minutes up the road. I'm going to have a lot of big uh, announcements. The back row bonus, uh, Zach Evans did that story last week. Uh, $25,000 on the line if somebody takes the option of going to the rear of the field and trying to come back through. And if they win it, they could win thirty. Thirty thousand dollars that day. Larson's wow. tried to do it two years in a row, and it hasn't really paid off. But uh, maybe third time's a charm for him. If, if you, it'd if, be pretty nice if it did. Yeah, I, I mean, listen. If you're a driver, if you don't have the cojones to go and That's do that, right. you're you're a wimp. Okay, right. so That's right. kudos <laughs> yep. to Kyle Larson for trying it. That's right. So. Yep. I want to know, uh, Jeremy, obviously we've seen you, and I know you said you're taking it one step at a time, but, you know, now you got the win at Roseville, you know, are are we thinking about maybe doing what you said you weren't going to do and continuing to run for points on the SRL series Uh, this year? I still really don't know, you know. (laughs) Uh, We're going to be at the next one in Vegas, and I think we're just going to go from there, you know. Um, I'd like to. It's just we'll see. Got to keep coming up with sponsor money and – you know, keep my keep my dad happy, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'd like to, but we'll, we'll see. It, can, it does conflict with some races I want to do, so we'll just have to play it by ear. Hey, by virtue of your win out at Roseville this Saturday, you will receive an invitation to the Speed 51 Super Select at Lucas Oil Raceway September 7th. I know you are going to go to that event next year, so. I know you haven't talked to your dad about that yet, but can we get you to commit to that just yet? Will we see you in Indianapolis come September? I'd like to. I, I can't. I can't uh, say for sure yes because you know it does. Uh, my dad does play a big role in that, so you know I'll talk to him and see if we can make it out there. But I, I'd, I'd love to be there. You know, it's going to be a great race, and you know I think all the best drivers are going to be there, and you know I think it'd be pretty cool to come out there and. Uh, put on a show and maybe even win that thing. You tell your dad to give me a shout, okay? Just have him give me a call on the old Bob Dillner hotline. We spoke last year before you guys committed and so forth. So, um, you know, we want to make sure we accommodate all teams from all across America. Um, You know, for the rest of this season, you know, I I know things are up in the air with the SRL Tour, but are there any outside races that you're looking to to try to accomplish once again or something new? And, And I believe you're building a street stock. Is that thing done? Are you ready to go racing with that? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get it done for this weekend, actually. It's a uh, <laughs> first point or first race uh, for you cast speedway. And, uh, I got to get a motor in it and do a couple things this week. So I'm going to try to do that and try to go support my uh, local short track. And the Kowicki driver development program, you got a lot going on with that as well. And of course this win is going to help your cause. They are going after the, the big bucks that they have on the line, more than $60,000 to the champion this year. I don't know if you can still hear me, but you're like cutting out. I can't. It got like super quiet. I would just blame it on Mark Keeler. Yeah, it's Mark's fault. Yeah, it's Mark's fault. It's always Mark's fault. No, we were talking about the Kowicki Driver Development Program. With that win, obviously, that's a good thing in terms of running for the championship with all that money on the line at the end of the year with the Kowicki deal. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, it's definitely pretty cool. I mean, this is my first race, uh, you know, back with Kowicki. So, it's pretty cool to pick up the win, and uh, you know we've been giving back to the community. So uh, it's been it's been pretty pretty neat. Um, I'm just looking forward to the rest of the year representing uh, those colors, and uh, hopefully it all pays off. Well, Das, we appreciate you waking up this morning to talk to us. I know it's early out there, and 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 we saw an improvement from the first time we called you a couple of weeks ago <laughs> to now. So the third time is going to be an absolute charm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll be up and ready. There you go. He'll Jer- be calling us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, I want to be on the bull ring, damn it. I want to talk about Thorny. Bump me out of the way. That's but, right. Uh, yeah. Congratulations on the win this past weekend. Thanks, Bob. I you appreciate got it. it. Jeremy Das, uh, 
you know, it's early. He's not a big talker. But at the same time, the kid's got so much talent behind the wheel. Yeah, and on the 51 ballot for the drafts this year. Yes, so absolutely. In the top 51, easy. Where are you going to put him? Easy. That's a good question. And I like that. You finally asked me a, a question here this Only morning. Only took 15 Yeah, 15 we're at the Listen, end of the show. My the- coffee kicked in. I drank it all. We're good. <laughs> This is the discussion we're going to get into next week. Um, we're going to talk all about um, the short track draft, who's going to be where, who's going to be a sleeper, who's going to be number one. There's a few vying for it. Das is definitely in my top ten. I haven't sat down and looked at the list right now. Yep. He's, he's, he's not my number one. Okay, Sorry, Jeremy. But he, he's definitely knocking on the door without me looking at the list, knocking on the door – for uh, the top five, because I think the kid's got a lot of talent. Now, we may say he needs a little more coffee in the morning, to be a little bit more energetic, that sort of thing. Um, So everybody has something that they can improve upon, okay? Giovanni Bramani, a lot of talk about him. Uh, You know it's like pulling teeth in an interview with him, Mm -hmm. and, and if there's anything that's going to knock him down a few pegs right now, it is that. But that's where, you know, everybody needs to look at the big picture and not just what you do on the racetrack. I think this year, like last year, it was kind of easy because it's like, all right, number one pick. I think it was an easy choice in Harrison for not for everybody, but I think for for most people. And the year before that, it was Todd. You know, there was a couple guys that you knew was going to be between this year. It's hard to really kind of like until I sit down and look at it. I don't know who my number one is yet. Yeah, I have like three that I'm looking at, and I'll say it next week, even though I plan not to be here on set next week. I don't know what your plans are. I don't know either. Okay, (laughs) we'll have to talk about that. (laughs) It could be Zach, Mark, and maybe Mamba or something like that. That's right. We'll put Zach here. Who knows? (laughs) Yeah. But, you know, I'm still looking at what I I really want, honestly. And and I am just one of, I, I think last year, uh, we had nearly 75 people as part of the panel of experts that make this up. Um, so you, you have dirt people, you have pavement people voting, you have industry leaders, you have race car drivers, you have former number one picks, you have NASCAR drivers, you have NASCAR scouts, you name it. A, a lot of these people rank the drivers, and then we take a cumulative average. Uh, Brandon Paul, honestly, does all the configuration there and, and does all the computation and then has to give me the list, and I look, and I'm like, oh, some people are going to be pretty pissed. <laughs> yeah. And then all, all the social media interaction, I, I know, and I love her, Carson Elledge. Um, you know, uh, Grayson Raz has been outspoken before. Um, I, I, there was a couple of other people as well. Um, who is the kid that that ran Cannon East? Uh, Anthony Alfredo uh, was a little outspoken last year uh, in terms of where he was in the draft. Um, listen, it, it, it's not Bob Delner's draft. It's not even the Speed 51 draft. Right. You know, he, you know, put your talking on the racetrack, put your talking on the microphone, and uh, get yourself out there on social media and so forth. And, and the panel of people will give you a vote. Yep. If you don't do that, it, we don't control it. I'll put it this way there's a few guys that, you know, if they did something relevant on the racetrack within the next couple weeks, yes. that's going to change. It's only the one top week. Spot. This weekend this is week? the only weekend. This la- we are so far behind, honestly, because we don't have the ballot out because we've been working on this new site. Uh, we've been working on all the videos, all our coverage, and so forth. Uh, honestly, we're about uh, two, three weeks behind. Usually yeah. we have the ballot out for a long time. Right, so- and I procrastinate it yes, for a couple weeks. <laughs> so so the, the ballot, I believe, will come out Wednesday. Uh, everyone will have to get their vote in by next Tuesday. Then the tabulations will take place, and I believe it's next Friday, not this Friday, but the following right. Friday that the number one selection will be announced. Uh, the schedule in terms of the announcement for all of the 51 selections will take place here uh, over the course of the next week. We'll have the schedule out and so forth so you can tar- partake. And it's not just the top 51. Uh, then we have the best of the rest, those who miss the cut, the top females, um, you know, there are so many, uh, the top modified drivers, top super late model drivers, top dirt drivers, you name it. Uh, there are so many different stories that come out surrounding the short track draft presented by PFC Brakes on Speed 51. So Brandon Paul and Zach Evans and everybody on our editorial staff are uh, going to be doing a lot of work. And then I know Tom Ryan's got some work to be done, even though he's taking a little vacation this week. He'll be back in time to cut all the cool stuff for when we announce that number one pick on April 25th. And I believe that's a Friday. 
You want a cool stat? Yeah. I was at Bristol, um, well, I guess that was two weeks ago now. For the cup race on that Sunday, 13 drivers that were in the starting lineup for the Bristol Cup race are former draft picks. Not number ones, but are former uh, draft picks in the in the PFC or I guess it's not Speed 51 draft. I hate saying that because everybody thinks it's just us making it up. You even said the wrong thing. It's the short track draft. Short track draft presented by PFC Breaks on Speed51.com. i got to practice that. Yeah, you do. It's brutal. Man, you need coffee or another monster energy You're always making fun of us. No, this (laughs) is a screw up. I'm six weeks off of Red Bull. That's the problem. Yeah, and and, and less sugar in your life. Yep. Our killer's getting healthy. We love that. Well, Zach Evans, do you have your number one pick? At least penciled in? Penciled in? Yeah. Penciled in. I'm thinking Chandler Smith. That oh, was, that wow. Was, that okay. was kind of where I was at, too. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's a good one, a good pick. That's one of my three that I am considering. But you know I don't like picking the favorite. Okay? You sure don't. Bob, I wouldn't be surprised if Bob's is a dirt guy. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm not sure yet, honestly. But I think I might surprise you. Okay? Because... Mark's giving you the music. He's I know. Like, right, I love go. it. I do not like going with the favorite. Okay. I didn't pick Harrison Burton, even though he very well could have been mine. I didn't pick Todd Gilliland. I didn't pick Ty Majeski. Those are the last three number one picks in the short track draft presented by PFC Brakes on Speed 51. Next Monday morning on the Bull Ring. That's what we will talk about. And, of course, if anything big happens, because there's always a little controversy oh, yeah. coming out of the Easter Bunny 150 and all the great dirt racing action at Virginia Motor Speedway. If you can, get out to those racetracks, Hickory Motor Speedway and Virginia Motor Speedway, this Saturday night. Thanks for watching the Morning Bull Ring.